Nerdcast! This is War Cry, Slurpcast TV. Today we talk about Games Workshop's, I would say, newest skirmish game. Um, been out for about a year, not to make this too evergreen, but the fact that they took the Age of Sigmar universe and said, how can we make a completely different game? Um, before we even jump anywhere into it, let's get some introductions out of the way. Um, Biron, are you above me? I am to your left. Okay, it's Biron, probably Brian down there. Yeah, and, uh, right below you, yep. Right below me, I figure. Um, so those of you who played Age of Sigmar when it came out may also remember a short-lived Age of Sigmar skirmish game. Uh, we played that at Grognar Games, right, uh, Mike? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it sucked. And yeah. It, it did. There wasn't anything special about it. It was probably like 15 pages, which the rules in here are actually only about 15 pages too. So we'll talk about that, that the size of the rules does not make the game by any means. However, it was clearly like, it could have been a white dwarf add-on. You know, take your favorite 10 models and take the same stats you already have and just like fight people one-on-one -on -one instead of a, a unit. That was the game. So do you guys think before we even get into it that GW wanted to do, because I know there was always that Mordheim resurrection rumor that went on because they've resurrected Necromunda, Blood Bowl, which asterisk, some people go, never went away, whatever. Um, all those other games, but they didn't bring back Mordheim, but they made a brand new game. Do you think that this was kind of um, a way to do something different, a way to entry level uh, gateway to Age of Sigmar and a way to shut Mordheim players? Is that what the creating war cry because they didn't do age of sigmar skirmish this is not what it is this is a brand new game you think that's what it was for no uh all the factions in war cry are different the mechanics are totally different and then, then what what then what then age of sigmar well i mean not really they have a faction the the, the ones that come in the rule book yes but you can play any faction in Warcry. You just get the cards. Now, yes, but that was a year later. I don't. That, you don't think that was part of the plan? That was but, right away, Mike. You could get the cards pretty much right away for the. So when Warcry, some of them. Okay, you're right. So Warcry comes out. I get it on day one, and we'll talk about all uh, all the Warcry stuff. I'm just kind of just getting some general like getting to Warcry, I guess first. Um, I get it on day one, and then. There are a handful of warband, chaos warbands to start with. The new one's gonna come every month or two a month, whatever. Yeah. I remember buying the undead cards like pretty quick, the Nagash ones, because I have a bunch of, who doesn't have yeah. Delta Zombie? Like you have a, a free faction basically, buy the $10 pack of cards. That did not take that long to get those. It was maybe two months after, maybe a month. Yeah. I think they released a handful right away. Yeah, but the mechanics are different, so are, are are so different that I don't think using the same models is the entryway into it. And if I don't, anything, I don't the, think the classic factions work well in the game. All right, so we're, we're going to get into all that kind of stuff. So just getting to Warcry and, and its release. Um, so Mike, it's to you, it's not a gateway to Age of Sigmar. It is not a way to uh, placate Mordheim fans. And it is not, well, I forgot what the third one I said was. It's none of those things. So is this no. just, let's make a brand new game? I said in the universe, but it's its well, its own game. Kill Team, I mean, I'm just, we have yeah, parallels. Yeah, definitely for Kill Team, yeah. You can't talk about Games Workshop without the comparisons of Warhammer Fantasy slash Age of Sigmar and 40K. Um, they have their battle game. They have their skirmish game that feeds into it. They have their battle game. Nope, this is not the feeder game that you're thinking. Um, I think Kill Team is now its own game, but initially it was kind of like the Age of Sigmar skirmish. Like, just play the 40K factions, use the same rules, whatever, except it's one-on-one. -on -one. And they said, let's make some new rules. And it still has basis in 40K stat line, typical GW, you know, movement, yeah. all the normal everything. 
this game is totally different. I don't know. I mean, you guys probably remember when we did the Warhammer Underworld show, I said, this doesn't feel like a Games Workshop game. And I'm going to say that not quite to that level with this one, but it's along the same path. Almost uh, we are onto something with trying to, um, you know, we don't have to follow the mold that we do our battle games. And we don't have to do the same uh, stat lines, the same everything. Um, it's all brand new and fresh. And that's kind of from the get-go, that was the, the thought of this game. I see this kind of along the same lines as, as both Kill Team and even uh, what's it called Apocalypse, where it's their test bed for rules that they might want to integrate into the core game. I don't, maybe. Um, I mean, Apocalypse and Kill Team still have their basis in the, the same... Uh, right, but they have some refinements, and a lot of which I usually see, wow, this would be good in the real game. I, I agree, but if, like, another company came out with Apocalypse you'd look at this rules and say, oh, this is 40K. Yes. Whereas if another company came out with Warcry, it would, you right. know, minus the flop, you'd say, oh, this is a totally different game. If you I think of Warcry along the lines of the re-release of Necromunda, where you have the gangs and then you have these chaos gangs. So it's, it's a whole new factions. It lets them run wild with creativity in that. Combine that with Yahtzee. I guess. Yeah. Well, Necromunda, you're, it, it's, a diff, it's a different game. We'll probably cover that at some point, too. Um, I just think this one is so far different. It, I agree. It, it's so different, and um, you know, it's uh, I, I think that if you were to strip away, it's kind of like those old like taste tests they used to do at the commercials, like Brand X is here. If you took away the models for this game and just had the rules as is, you could not tell me this is a Games Workshop game. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just not, it, it doesn't follow the same yeah. anything. And that's what I said about Underworlds, too. And let's not forget, I know Brian is a big stats man. Extreme loves the stats. He was up all night thinking about stats for this one. Yeah. Uh, and I was, too. We'll get to that at the end, obviously. But Underworlds got my highest rating ever with a five Slurpee ratings. And a big part of that was it got to combine my two favorite things. Games Workshop models and not Games Workshop rules. Um, that's pretty cool. And so Warcry is going to see some similarities, but it is straight up a skirmish game. Um, so let's kind of delve into it a bit here. And since I, I use the S word, I want to bring that up. When we're talking about skirmish games, I know that this crew, this motley crew around me here, they are a little biased. In general, Biron and Mike especially, you guys love skirmish games, fair? Yes. Yeah. Extreme, somewhat? I prefer them over other games. Okay. Um, I, I like them, but I prefer not. I prefer either I like battle games a lot. Um, I like co-op type game, board game, but I mean, Skirmish Games is ranked below the rest. I like, like, Underworlds is great for me. It's a, it's a board game, it's models, all that. So we're going to, as we get to kind of the nitty gritty of the game itself, you're going to see some of those reasons why I don't like it. Oh, sorry, why I don't like some portions of it. Sorry, I don't want to, I do like Warcry before we get into it, no spoilers. But, um, but there's some things that pop up that are like, this is the stuff that gets me annoyed with skirmish games. And we'll get into some of that as the time goes on. Um, in Warcry, um, and Mike, maybe if you want to kind of set the, the, the setting a little bit, um, it's all chaos. How does it all come together? They're all trying to appease uh, the gods, correct? They're all trying to appease Acheron, specifically. Okay. So, so not the gods, the Chaos uh, Lord. Yeah. All Peaks? Is that what it's called? The, the what? They're all at All Peaks? Is that what it's called? It's where Acheron it's, called, all, is, it's either eight points or all points? All or, points. Or, that's it. All okay. points. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's that's the Chaos point. Star. Yeah. All the eight realms come together and it's like, you know, from that point, they can get to all the different realms. Okay. Uh, and like Hell's Mouth them, and Buffy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but each of them has their own specialization. So, like, I play the Iron Golem, which, by the way, um, sometimes they say Iron Golem, like, plural, and sometimes they say Iron Golems. Like, I thought it was, we are the Iron Golem. And then I read, if you're playing Iron Golems, I thought that was weird. No consistency there. But anyway. No. Yeah, they're, they're like the dwarves in a sense because they're all about armor and weapons, right? Yeah, they're tanky and slow. And the, well, that play, okay, I meant fluff, but yes, playability 
they are as well. If you get a, the regular dude with the shield has a five toughness and it's pretty unstoppable. And he's like, you know, 80 points. Uh, but when but you only look, one of them is technically a, a, a Duradin, so yeah. That's the dwarf. Oh, oh, a dur oh, okay. Trademark dwarf. Yes. I will tell you, I only saw it written. I've never heard it spoken, and it threw me off for a second. <laughs> when you look at the, like Games Workshop new terms on paper, you just get used to seeing the word. Yeah. You used to like, like, do you say elves or is it elves? Oh, I say elves and ogres. Yeah. Fuck how so they're like, It's like when you read a, a fantasy novel and then you hear an audiobook version of it, and you're like, that's how you pronounce that. That guy. Yeah. Well, we were talking about yeah, yes. you know, I didn't know Arrakis or Arrakis. Well, depending on, it was a book. I mean, depending on how you read things. Um, I think that uh, back in the old days, GW, I mean, they obviously didn't do that. They just had the typical fantasy races. But I noticed they always did it with demons. They made it demons, even though it's demons. Like, was that also for trademark or was that to not be satanic? What was the deal? But it was probably for cause the satanic panic from the 80s, you know? Right, that's what I thought. Well, no, it's like, also British spelling, like color and armor. Yeah, they're backwards people. Okay. Over there. So spelling it, D-A-E, is British demon? Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. But then there's daemon, which is a, a technological term. Well, then I, yeah, then I got my first email program. I believe it was oh, yeah. Eudora. And I, I got a message from Mailer Damon. I was like, who yeah. are you? I don't want to summon him. He cool. But the, gold, the golden demon was spelled demon. Well, that was created in America or no? No. I don't know. Well, we're going to have a demon episode, obviously. Uh, so right off the bat, you get the War Cry book. They got a really cool, like, quick little page of silhouettes, um, even though these are the two that came in the box set. One is the, the beast, the untamed beast, which is not beast men, but like warriors, hunters, iron golem there. Um, they've got these. Really the cool beasts are OP. You think so? They yep. have no armor. All right. They don't need um, it. We got the birdmen, and the cipher lords are kind of uh, chaos not, ninjas. Yeah. yeah, not Zinchi, but they have the ninja kind of. They, they fly. Yeah, they're. I, I do associate because that's what I played. I associate with Zinch. Yeah. Did you clip off the head things or no? I saw a lot of people. No, do that. I, I left it on there. I did that with. I clipped off the head things with the um, Legio Custodes for 40k. Oh, yeah, yeah. They looked dumb. These looked more fitting. Yeah, yeah they, for sure, yeah. Uh, Unmade looked to me the most chaos because they're literally just like a bits box full of fucked up shit. Yeah. They remind me of, they seem slaneshy to me because of Very much, no, yes. Yeah. Splinter Fang, those are the gladiator guys, right? With yeah. The yeah, those guys were nice. And then these two did not come out in the release. They're out now though, right? Spire Tyrants for sure. I think they both are. One is um, one is Vikings, this one, right? Yeah, that one was actually really disappointing to me, but yeah. Did they well, just end up looking like Marauders or something? Well, they're better looking than Marauders, so maybe they are their new Marauders. Because yeah. they, never, they never updated that old Marauder kit, did they? No, not at all. And I mean, I know everyone loves it for conversion purposes, but they're very outdated. Um, yeah, for sure. These, I think these are up. I think they're just like super fiery guys, which obviously with the name. So you have these eight uh, factions, chaos. They all have their own thing going on. Um, I think when I first got it, my first thought was, are these, these are chaos cults, right? Would you consider that? These are, these are chaos cults? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so um, as people started to get interested in the game, I started to realize rather quickly that they are going to be having an intro or a gateway to Age of Sigmar. So you can immediately grab whatever faction you have. If you play Stormcast, if you play Corn, whatever, buy the pack of cards, like 10 bucks or 12 bucks. You get the big card, which I've got some here, which we'll talk about. And it shows you all the, uh, all the types that are going into it. And then the bunch of actual card cards that have the stats on it and the points. And then, of course, you have your special things you can do, which we'll talk about as well. So, and, and see, also in every language under the sun. Yeah. Um, the dumbest thing ever. There's, there's no words. It's like we're going to leave out words so we can, but you also yeah, so use do, symbols so we don't have to have translation. But then when you buy something, it comes in, you get so much extra crap. Right. It's, it's, it's a bunch of, You don't even need it. Um, so they come out with eight, eight factions of chaos. And then I think probably at least 12, maybe 15 
maybe 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 I'm maybe lower. Um, no, no, no. It's more than that because it came out the last, a second wave. Okay, so there's any gurgles. So yeah, yeah. So there's so many things to play here, and I think that if you want a cool fantasy skirmish game, so you watched our Relic Blade episode, you thought that's cool. Maybe one day you looked at um, with some of the other ones like uh, Frostgrave or Kings of War Vanguard. You have these other skirmish games. You're like Warcry is a is a good skirmish game to get into great models and we'll talk about the rules and how uh, streamlined they are in my opinion but then also they're to me they're satisfying two groups there two audiences also you play age of sigmar and sometimes you just your store closes at eight you don't have time for the big game all the time what do you play let's just play one-offs or make a little mini campaign or whatever and then you take your army and you pick the guys you want to grab on there, whether it's shooting, hand-to-hand, big guys, little guys, and you make roughly 1,000 points, and you now have your faction in war cry. And balance-wise, I've heard things all over the place. Um, I don't care about the competitive side, but I don't think this is really a super balanced game, nor is it intending to be. What do you guys think on that? I think, I think the core factions of the, the Chaos Tribes that they released are a little more balanced. And yeah. And again, my only experience is I tried the fish elves because um, I wanted an excuse to buy those fish elves. I thought they looked really cool. Yeah. And the flying eel rider guys just seemed, they'd be all over the board. They could get across the... the Duncan or... In, uh, It'll lift Deepkin or whatever. Okay, I, yeah. 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 But, so yeah I just like the eel riders and they're across the board in turn one and move, and being able to get where you want to go is so big in this game. Yeah. Well, it's really not balanced. I feel like there was an intent, like they intended for it to be balanced, though, because they had a tournament rule set, and they've done organized play kits and stuff, and it feels like they wanted to have a competitive version of the game. Well, the Deep Kid were one of the first ones you could get the cards for, because it was a relatively new army, and they wanted, to, and they were popular to sell kits and stuff like that, yeah. so maybe it got better with other factions. Like I said, I only played them, and yeah, I don't know if it was one of the few games there. I won, and I was like, I probably should have won this game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the intention was there. I, I, I think, to me, because there are narrative campaign rules in the main rule book. I think the intention from the get-go was, like Biron said, a Necromunda-ish feel, not to the rules, but to the, what is this game trying to do? You're gonna get some cool models, play some cool games. You don't know what mission you're gonna get. Let's talk about these two and the cards and all that and be ready for anything, but don't get mad if this one isn't gonna suit your armies or your war band's specialty, because that just doesn't happen. I mean, when this is for people who played 40K with the open war cards, which we love doing, you know, and it was a fantastic way to play. That's what they did. So right off the bat, let's play a battle. Grab your stuff. I'll grab my stuff, meet at the store. First deck, here's the terrain you set up. Mm -hmm. You follow it as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, quick side note on the terrain. So I do want to mention that the terrain is fantastic for this thing. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, here's one, and by the way, this is the one time I followed a Games Workshop video 100% to how to paint. Yeah. And I did the green, I made my own green wash, the marble, all that, and it's not, I mean, it's mostly dry brushing and washes, but like I literally followed it as an experiment to see what happens. Um, one side note, you probably already heard this somewhere, but if you have not heard this already, if you want to build the terrain to play in the game, please Google search yes. how to build Warcry terrain for the game Warcry. If you build it with the instructions, you will be wrong. Yeah, it's, it doesn't match up to the, the actual ones in the game. Now, if you say, I'm just gonna make my own terrain, like, you know, we're gonna play the store, and who cares, we're, you're gonna, Todd's gonna set it up, whatever, that's fine. But if you actually wanna play it with these four or five uh, little mini ruined structures, um, the, like, the, my manual didn't say to build it like this. It yep. had it completely opposite. And I actually, like I start, as always, start off just putting shit together. I had to tear it apart. I was so mad. Um, and then I realized I need to take my time and watch these videos. So there's videos and there's blogs about it. So definitely look that up when you're building the terrain. So, I have to say, I think that's a huge, at least initial detriment to the game is so much of the game is dependent upon the cards and the terrain for if you're using, the, you know, that that De system of setting detriment? up detriment that sounds people. awesome that sounds awesome to me oh, that detriment. it is they, awesome but they effed up yeah they don't give the instructions oh. on how to do that and yeah, yeah that part of it sure but i mean 
if you, I know they fucked up on that, but, ever, but if you watch the videos and you built it the way to fit this, you're, it's not a detriment anymore. You just mean that, that part of it, right? Well, yeah, but. I, well, I think it is. If you go to buy the box today, it's still going to have the fucked up instructions. I know, but I don't want to, so it can't, we can't let this whole game get ruined because they, right. they, they fucked up the instructions. I mean. But yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. You know, but. You're totally right. But I mean, once I got past that hurdle, I never thought of it again until this episode. You know what I mean? It wasn't, I, I, I didn't, it was, it was a dumb mistake. They shouldn't have come out with instruction manual to put it together this way. Like, it was like whoever does the, the, the assembly guides, whoever does the rules, they don't work together. <laughs> and it's like, well, this, and it was, so I get that totally. Once you get past that, and if that pissed you off so much, then obviously you don't care about this game. Anyway, no, no, so, no, but I'm just saying oh, that. Well, not you. I mean, if someone watching it, you know. So then you go to the um, victory. No. Let's go to, oh, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So then we have our, so you got your terrain, how it's set up. Then you get your deployment. So in this game, you're going to take your warband. Let's just say it's roughly, um, you know, 10 models or so. You're going to split it up to hammer and, no, not anvil, hammer, shield, and dagger, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, but, but before you go on from that, yeah, that is also the dumbest shit ever. How about team one, two, and three? It was one of the things like, is this hammer, dagger, Listen, shield, sword? When you, were, when you were in the orange reading group in, a, in school, they couldn't yeah. call you the slow reading group. They called you orange for a reason. <laughs> it's about branding. And we all talk, we talk about it every episode. This, to be honest with you, though, I feel that was a missed opportunity. They should have given you uh, hammer, shield, and dagger tokens mm -hmm. to kind of just you put... Know what, Technically, they did. If you bought Warhammer Underworlds, <laughs> the die... <laughs> This is a real thing. The dice have uh, swords, so daggers, shield, and hammer, and people are using them for deployments. And I think that's a great idea. Now, I agree with you that's a great idea, and I never thought of it until right now. Life hack. <laughs> but yes, of course. They, I mean, what game company doesn't like making a billion fucking counters? And for you skirmish lovers, don't you love counters up the ass anyway? That's just kind Dude. of what what skirmish players love. So. Yeah, missed opportunity. I love that. You should play the Fallout game. That is the crazy. most counters of a game ever. A lot of them. A lot of them. So when you build your arm or you break apart your warband, um, you're going to split it up. Got to have at least one in each one. And Shield's got to have at least a third, right? I think that's about right. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. the Shield has to have a third, and they all have to have at least one. So one, put your leader as the dagger. That's fine. By himself, totally cool. With Iron Golems, I'm, I always make the ogre by himself just because he just – he could take out a corner by himself. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. So um, that's kind of, it's really cool because I like narrative games. I'm not talking about a campaign. I'm talking about just a game that's, why are we fighting? Ha I like when there's a reason. You don't even have to think about it. You're, you literally bust out four decks. We already know the terrain. So it, depending on how that's set up, whether it's got this cool, like this thing, which some people did the bloody eye, the, 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 the blood dripping. You ever see that one online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like it's you got your, you, like it's you, Mary <laughs> to, to some the GW version yes yeah, yeah. Um, spelled M A E R Y <laughs> trademark <Animal> man <laughs> of course <laughs> so you've got you've got your terrain set up and now you can got a story about that maybe there's a the, the bell at the top is some kind of skating thing whatever now you talk about who's deploying where cool so now you know what's up you can look at it tactically and now you look at the victory conditions so. Once I believe is a um, attacker and defender, and the attacker has to kill the entire shield of the defender. If the defender survives in four turns, they win. So, three, three. Mm, end of the fourth battle round, Mike. Oh, really? Mike is wrong. Oh, <laughs> this guy keeps on the screen the whole fucking show. How about that? All right, hey, I don't mean, Mike. I don't mean to be blunt, but um, Thanks, Emily. what's great is this is a. So I just pulled this one out at random, um, but this is a really cool mission to talk about how this game should be played and why you know Biron's 
thing of, well, I went across the board and turned one, this and that. I, if you only put, let's say your, your war band has six models, which if they're more elite, they might. I kill two of them. You put two in the shield, let's say. I kill two of them, I win the game. Or I hide two of them. Oh, they also have a thing on this one, you can't hide. The, the four inches around is like a, you're, you're ambushed from the attackers. So you can't run in the corners. Four inch box around the whole board is like, you're automatically dead. But my point is, it's a four turn game or a, a one turn game or two turn game if you kill the shield that quick. I love that. That's a, such a like, what the fuck kind of mission that would throw off somebody's meta that they're trying to build their list around. First off, you roll on attack or defender. So there's that. Then the defender has to stay alive. And to be fair, the defender has to keep two or the shield alive. And, I, and you do pick, I believe you do pick victory conditions after you pick hammer, shield, dagger, right? But yeah, because otherwise I would have put a shit ton of models. That's right, yeah. So that's what we did in the right order. We got the terrain, we got your, whatever it's called, faction split up. Then you get the mission. And of course, everyone's like, oh, if I would have known that, I would have put like as many models as I can, every, you know, basically putting one in the two other ones, and all of them in the shield, but that's why they make you do it first. So this mission is kind of a screwball into a lot of people's plans. And the whole deck is full of those. And I think that's- Someone actually ran the numbers about the dagger, hammer, shield, about- yeah. In the highest percent of missions, you want to beef up this one the most because they're going to be either on the board first turn or going to be critical. Someone, someone actually ran the numbers because that's what people do. Yeah, and I and I, I don't think you know what. Even if you do that, you still may not get what you're. Expecting. No, it's 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 like you know a ten percent more chance or something. Right. I I think I the last game I played, I put my leader in the dagger, and he didn't come in. He didn't come in on the first turn, and so. They're already slow as hell. It just it, it's, yeah. If you put your big guy in one that doesn't come until turn three, he's not going to do anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you. Oh, I sk I skipped the step. So you you split up everything first, then you draw the deployments. Then you draw the deployment. Yeah. Right. Because why would you? You know. Because yeah. I'm going to see on there when they come in. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's going to say it says round two on there. So I'm like, oh, I don't want, I'm going to put my shitty guys coming around too. Right. So you split them first. That's the hardest thing right there. And then, you know, I know like my, my tactic, which isn't much of a tactic, usually is just like try to even it out yep. a little bit because yep. I don't know what I'm going to get. I'm sure that like Biron said, there's better things to do. Um, the only one I left by himself ever is the ogre. And I don't even do that all the time. Sometimes I do the ogre and then the chaos dwarf just gets a funny little buddy comedy, if you will. Mass um, Blaster. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Who run Barter Town? <laughs> And uh, so you split them up, then you do your deployment, then you pick your victory conditions, and of course, because why wouldn't you have a twist? You have the winds of fate, you have the mics of rot. I can't read upside down. Or, winds. Winds, oh, of winds. <laughs> Mike's wins. I find Mike's wins. the yeah. twist one is one where we'd often go, eh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or we would conveniently forget it. Yeah. When we played uh, open war decks in 40K, the twist didn't always get used either. I mean, well, a lot of times I took all the really bad ones. Any deployment that has circles gets thrown away. Circles are out, yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're not, I'm not bringing a compass to a game. I just, I'm just not doing it. I'm not uh, most playing anything by 3.14. Not going to do it. Yeah, so I mean, these cards are much like anything in any game. What, what does Jervis Johnson say? A game is an agreement between two people to have fun. You can say, no, fuck that. Yes, add that, whatever. But right off the bat, you don't have to think about anything. Like we're ready to play in five minutes. Like, do you guys all like that concept of this game? I do, because um, sometimes that's like, well, what should we do? And you end up just going, ah, kill, I guess. Right. Which is how we play every game for the first four rounds, anyway. Battle games are, are kill anyway, and I play orcs in forty k a lot anyway. It's kill, but I mean, I just think right off the bat, like you have now. The negative of this is your game might be over in thirty minutes, or maybe even less. I'd and, say that's a positive. <laughs> I mean, if you're playing someone you like, is that a positive? Do you, yeah, do because you, you get more trunk time. This, why don't you just forget about games and just have friends? I don't know. I'll just play. <laughs> <laughs> There's this thing called friends you can, you can like tap into, and yeah. they don't involve but games. We need an excuse to get together. So the 
15 minutes of gaming is an excuse right. <laughs> for them the 45 minutes afterwards. Like, listen, I wanted to go to see Extreme Indianapolis to play Super Show, even though my game could be over in three minutes. But I really wanted that car ride where I didn't have to drive. Yeah, that's exactly. what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you're playing someone you're not a big fan of, this is a big positive. Um, in and out, boom, boom, you're done. And if you're playing a campaign, I mean, much like every campaign, and there's risks of things happening, you might just kind of be like, no, screw it, bail. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't know this system if people die or heal. Or I, didn't, I didn't look at that really, but you can, you can game that too, like Necromunda. I mean, sometimes people Necromunda bottle out on purpose because I want to heal everyone or whatever. And when we talk about being a, you know, a, a, an advocate for a game, I think this is good for two people to play that don't even know each other because it's like, there's no social contract to write, like, this is how we're going to, no, it's like, you deploy there, here's the mission. There is measuring, though. And yeah. never forget that um, acquaintances or friends or randos, that could be a problem at some point. Some people, I mean, I'll, they don't know how to measure in these games. Or they Just, do and they cheat. They do and they cheat. Um, they go ass to mouth. In the old days of 40K, by the way, when not, no pre-measuring was allowed, I knew that when I stretched this out, this is exactly six inches between the two. So I could put this on the table and always know six inches how far something is. Um, fun fact. Who would you like, Hey, hang loose, guys. Yeah. I said, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? I know we're at Fox Valley Mall and there's no fucking surfers in, in 100 miles of here, but hang loose, guys. No, I, I love I, the whippy sticks when you couldn't pre-measure people would hold them up and go like... <laughs> I try to like... Or like put it next to it and like yeah. set it right in there. So I drop my whippy stick. Or they know the exact measurement between a, a buildings, like a game table. You oh, know, yeah. that was a, that was a big one all the time too back in the day. So um, this is a skirmish game that involves measuring, and there's always a you know a chance that that could somehow get in the way. The one thing with this game that I wasn't super clear on was um, oh, let me before we get into the unclear. So. We went through all the pregame stuff. We start the game. You then begin after you initiative and all that. Let's talk about the pretty unique, uh, the, the, the biggest thing about this game that we haven't even talked about yet. Um, and by the way, you got to get a board like this, man. Look at this shit. This is a pair of them for about 12 bucks on Etsy because I want to track my quads, man. Is it a quad day? It's a quad day. Never skip quad, quad day. Trips, your dubs. In your wild dice. So you roll, I forgot what the turn's called, I think like initiative phase or yeah. action phase or whatever, but you do that at the beginning of the turn. You roll the dice. You roll six dice on each side. And this is to do two things. One, you tally up all of your doubles, triples, and quads. You put them off to the side, like a handy tool like that. Then your singles, however many singles you have, whoever has more, they get the initiative that turn. They're going first. Um, if you tie, then you can just reroll. So it's this is going to be a recurring theme in this game about this is a very efficient game. You roll once to, on many different things in this game to do other things. GW is usually roll it up, roll hit, roll hit, oh, roll, 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 roll again, no, you don't know, roll up. It's nonstop rolling dice. This game, you roll dice, and it always does more than one thing, which is pretty cool if you think about it. Now, is that going to make a a great game, no, but it's a cool mechanic. And a lot of these things in Warcry, I don't think are the best thing in the world, but it makes me go, hmm, that's efficient. You know? yeah, the, the dice thing was one of my favorite aspects of it. I, I, I agree 100%. Yeah, it's, 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 it's different, it's a cool thing. So let's talk about that real quick. Before we get into the initiative uh, side and in, in the actual turns, you now have your, uh, your doubles and your triples and all that. This tells you what you can do. So, doubles, triples, quads. A special ability you do in a model's activation, it doesn't count as their action. Every model gets two actions. You can do the same ones, you can do different ones. You can move, move, you can attack, move, you can move, attack, disengage, whatever. But you can also do one of these. The trick is the symbol here. So this is a faction symbol. I'm pretty sure there's no mixing of factions, right? Not that I know, no. Okay, so I don't know why they felt the need to repeat it on all of them, but it basically it says, 
All your models have to have this faction symbol. Okay, we already are anyway, because I'm pretty sure it's the rules. But the most important part are these. And let's talk about the fact that there are three chaos stars on here, you <laughs> sons of bitches. Yes. I, oh, infuriating. I mean, you know, this game is full of cool concepts and then fuck ups. It started with the terrain. The terrain is phenomenal. It's some of the yes. best fantasy terrain I've ever seen. For sure. And you fucked up the assembly guy. Well, no, I would I would raise a point about that. The one that comes in the starter box, yes. Some of the supplemental terrain boxes that come out are not they look great, but they play like shit. But the, yes. but, but those are Age of Sigmar boxes. They just repackaged them. Those aren't even those aren't Warcry. One of them was, wasn't the one I got the temple one specific. Yeah, the Warcry. temple tech, yeah, came out first. For Warcry, sure? yes, and thinking about Age of Sigmar. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's they are not good to play on. No. Well, there's the graveyard one, so they that repackaged is, it. That one's been they, repackaged eighty times. You yeah. know what people got pissed about though? Well, I, I bought the graveyard one ten years ago. Can I get the cards? No, you can't get the fucking cards. The cards are in the box of the repackaged graveyard terrain. <laughs> Could I have rules about climbing on things and getting knocked off things? But make give me only buildings that you can't actually put a model on. Yeah. Graveyard is. Fair point on all that. Terrain in the box, phenomenal looking. Yes. It was yeah. designed to be used yeah. for the game, whereas their supplemental ones were not. They were hand, they were just shoved in. Yeah. Fun dice mechanic. You roll off, cool abilities. Oh, keep an eye on those symbols because they're very close. Once you get past that, and sometimes you never do, because there was, I don't, I forgot what faction it was. It might have been undead. I, I fucked up totally because it was the chaos star with a skull the lines of the, like the four that are orthogonal were orthogonal. bold and bolder than the other ones. Yep. And, yep. At it and I couldn't use the ability and I fucked up and it was like, like the dumbest thing. I mean, can you imagine losing a game because of that? Because of, never mind. I just, you know, used the wild dice to turn the triple into a quad to this crazy good ability that's on the wrong guy. Like you yep. just, what do those symbols do? So the symbols tell you who can do them. So yeah. the first model I activate in my turn, let's call him Viron. Or Dave, let's call him Dave Hernandez. Yes. I look at Dave Hernandez's card, which did I not bring any cards down? Oh, anyway, um, I, will, uh, I look at his card and it's got all the stats on there. It also has the faction symbol and it also has the whatever that's called symbol. Uh, the rune, rune mark, I believe they call it. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't have that on Dave Hernandez's card, he can't do that ability. But if you notice, three of those look incredibly similar. Yes. So, uh, Extreme, I, you have a, a quizzical look on your face right now. Am I saying that word right? Quizzical, yes. Okay. It sounds wrong. Once you get your dice, you have wild dice. You get one every round, and then you can, you can also bank them for later. You can turn a single to a double, a double to a triple, or triple to a quad. You can't use two on one. You can't turn a double to a quad. And you can turn one of your wilds to a single to give yourself initiative if you want. Yes. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Good point. I didn't even think about that. It counts as using it, though, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what if all your dice were one, one of the six and you're, you couldn't pick a single? Because it's one through six, and you roll six own. dice. <laughs> then then you, pro you probably have initiative anyway. You can oh, still get yourself another single. <laughs> That's right. Good point. I was trying to break the system like the guy in Press Your Luck, and I couldn't handle it. Viron got me. He's the, <laughs> he's the ultimate whammy. Uh, once you've done this, you've allocated your dice. That's kind of a, a huge part of the game, but it requires a whole lot of. Uh, forward thinking like thinking it, who's you know, who's going to use what this just popped into my head um the night models batman game is similar in that respect okay where you, have, you, you allocate your dice before the gate before you start doing stuff mm -hmm. so you have to decide who's going to do more so like it's sort of like how you allocate your quad you're like i need a quad so this guy wasn't that um that was the thing in guild ball too remember you're yes. adding your yeah. Influence? I'm using the wrong yes. term. Influence, yes. <laughs> or whatever it was. Whatever the one Sarlo yelled at you for. Right, of course. <laughs> he was very rough on me because I didn't give all of them to the, the big guy. Yeah. I want to use the shitty guys too. Come on. Um, I want to put a guy in a coffin. Right. 
So you allocate this. Um, what I've found, and you guys might, that have played might, might see this as well, there's always a couple on here that are just garbage. Yes. And there's always a couple that are always good, and then there's a couple situations. That's, that's kind of um, – like The there's quality one, is usually pretty good. The Sylvaneth one is um, – the first one's healing. Like, any model can use it, and whatever dice you – oh, by the way, Extreme, we didn't explain this either. So let's say um, it's a double, right? It says double for that first one. Yeah. yeah. So it's a double, the first one. I don't want to use double ones for that one because it says use the value of it to do the thing. Not all of them say that. Some of them are just cash in a double to do this. On those, you probably want to use the low ones, but you want to save like really good, like fives and sixes. Like a double quad triple. six is insane. Yeah, where you can use them where the number means something and isn't just a number. So that first one is heal whatever number you rolled. You roll two sixes, heal six wounds is fantastic. Two ones, not a big deal. Might not have been good to use that one. Um, so how you use those, it's like, it's what you roll, the, the singles, doubles, triples, and quads. That's one. How you allocate your wild dice to make those into what you want it to be, it's two. And two and three are combined. Three is what you actually want to do. And then the last one is, you better hope the number works out too, because you could have had the best plan in the world for a quad and you get quad ones. And it's like, what the fuck? You know, that quad. One automatic damage. Ooh. Yeah, like that quad, I think on the ogre of Iron Gold, I could be wrong, but I think the, uh, his quad, his triple or quad is like a battering ram. You, you run him in, and if he's an inch away, whatever you roll, it's that much automatic, auto damage. You do it on six, like a lot of models are half dead. You do it on a one, it's like, was it worth it? Probably not. Yeah. So. It's, it's really a cool mechanic that does so many different things and also soup. I mean, not super random, but do you think that part of the game is a little annoying to competitive players? Yeah. The randomness of it. Sure. You can't, you can't plan your shit. You don't know what you're going to roll. Yeah. Cause you could tweak, you know, that's what the wild dice help average that out. Like I could give myself the doubles I need, but if you have four ones, it's, you're not going to, yeah, I mean, it, there's some of those that, for those factions that fly or jump or do cool things, that number is like number of inches or two times that or something. Mm -hmm. you, just, you can get screwed by, I mean, I know it goes without saying get screwed by dice in any game, but if you're trying to base a tactic around your special things, you could hope for the best. That's about it. I mean, at that point. So that's the, the first phase of the game. And it's super crucial. Like, it's a huge deal, a huge part of the game. And it's, a, it's its own little mini game within a game. It's pretty cool. It's the Yahtzee portion. And then you're also, you roll your dice. Whoever has initiative rolls their dice first. And then the other player rolls their dice. Then you get to play the, are you going to use your Are you going to use your wilds or not? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, almost like a game of chicken. Like, are you going to use your wild dice? Yeah. You know, because I might on turn one. I'm not. I'm going to pick up my die and put it in my hand just, just to huh? keep you into doing it, you know? Wait, so is there not a – is it whoever won the initiative choose the wild dice first, though? Yes, they have to. Okay. So it's not I, – I like your chicken game, but you still have to commit if you're a first Yeah, player. you got to commit. And so – but you got to kind of – Well, you can pick it up and then look at the other guy and go, which Yeah. Mean? Yeah, because if you can get him to use his, to burn his wild dice early when you're not going to use it anyways, then, you know. I thought on the last turn of the game, it was often used to get the initiative. Oh, yeah, always. Well, the fact that you can bank them is phenomenal. Um, you just yes. can't combine them in the same one. But you can turn, I mean, you can use them in, in that. I mean, you can add a wild die to each one of these because they're all different values. Yep. So, all right, so now the, the normal turn starts. You got that in your back pocket. You got a bunch of <laughs> ready to go when you want to use them. Now, model by model, you take turns activating two actions per model, throw a little counter on there, he's done, move on to the next one. Um, to Mike's point earlier about the tokens, in that mission we pulled, you got to keep track of who the shield was. Once they split apart, I mean, they might have deployed as, as a team, but right. they're gone when the game starts. That's a, that's a big part of the game is like targeting certain models for the mission right like they should have like those rings like for balls for a uh, uh, blood bowl yeah <laughs> like if you could have shield dagger and sword rings on your guys 
Are you a fan of that ring ball, Biron? Because you hate everything about Blood Bowl. And that's I like am. The, I do like the ring ball. I like it better than when they just like magnetize a ball or something like that. I like the ring ball. Magnetize. No, magnet's the best. Come on. No, 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 no. When I first saw the ring ball, I thought it was the stupidest thing ever until I saw someone actually use it. And I was like, that's genius. Yeah. I'm a ring okay. ball man. You know what? I do it in dread ball, though, because it's a, it's a, it's a hack. If you've, if you've got <coughs> invisible paints and painted that on the ring, now I'm in. But until then, yeah. you just ruined the fucking uh, the game for me. I, I was the in aesthetic. the moment. Yeah. I think there's a hula hoop guy out there now. It's weird. Anyway, uh, back to work. Right. So you're going back and forth, boom, 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 over and over again. Um, you have move, you have uh, attack, obviously. You have disengage, so if you're within an inch, you got to leave. You get three inches, I believe, anyway. Three inches, yeah. Uh, then, um, what's the last action? Oh, is there a th – oh, wait. Which – is that to just bait? Because if you wait, you don't get to go with them again, right? Well, if you wait on turn on your first action, you get, like, an Overwatch turn. But if you wait on your second action, it's nothing. It's basically – Oh, like, okay. It takes up one of your actions to wait, but if someone comes in, you can attack them. Yeah. Maybe it's my, my feeble mind. I never, in the handful of games I played, I never did wait. I just, I don't know. I never I, thought. I would never do Overwatch or wait or ever. Because I'm like, no, no, no. do something well, else. And to be Overwatch, there's, there's only a, a, not a lot of shooting in this game anyway. No, there's not. It's, and by the way, um, the, the races that do have shooting, you know, for, I showed up Sylvaneth there. You got those um, turnoff guys that, I mean, there really isn't a lot of line of sight rules. It's just like, yeah, you just got to see them. Like, there's, they really don't get into it. I know that irks a lot of people, but I, think, I guess they realize it's a mostly hand-to-hand -hand game. Is that what you – did you guys get the same it feeling? It is, but the, I wonder, at least with the, the Chaos Warbands that came out to start, uh, like, I play the Chaos Ninja guys, and they have, a, they have a rage attack, but it takes a double to do it. They're yeah. a little uh, Xena Warrior Princess Frisbee thing. Okay. But with Sylvaneth – you have archers, but they're super expensive. Kuroth hunters are expensive. Well, I wonder like, if like, a horde of goblin archers or whatever would be badass in this game. Yeah, they're like 200 points at least a, a yeah. model. So, um, yeah, and then I also know even, even the shooting guys, their, their weapons aren't crazy good. And I didn't notice, and like, I don't have all the faction packs, so not that anyone really does, but I don't think there's a ton of special abilities that buff shooting anyway. Uh, the so, Savage Orcs have one. Okay. And you get plus one attack, and I took me a – actually, to read an FAQ on this. It's not per round. It's per for the game. So it builds. Mm -hmm. But, again, the game's only four turns. Yeah. So, you're not, you know, you're not going to make him super buff. So here's the – I actually have a finished curry off hunter. Oh, that looks good. I still can't see him. He looks like a black silhouette, but I, I like your effort. You got a blue bow. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about these. I don't send them card on me. Let's talk about these stats right here. So you have the wheel. That looks pretty good. Is yeah. that the um, uh, Cypher Lords? Yeah, right? Cypher Lords. Like, they immediately look zinch to me. I know they're not, but they just, yeah. right off the bat, they have that zinchy Egyptian feel. Um, so there's one of the unit cards in the game. You have your rune mark on the top. It tells you what faction you're in. You have the one that tells you your abilities there. So she can do all the ones that have that flaming skull. You have your movement. You have your wounds, which I do not like wounds in this game. And I'll get to that in a second. We'll talk about the stats. Um, that's your toughness. Very important. It's an overall toughness when you're getting hit, just like in typical GW games. Uh, the attacker is rolling their strength, which is the fist, rolling against your toughness, which is that white dot there. Um, unlike GW games, they do have a little bit of a different thing with the uh, rolling. When you roll to hits, or we, there is no roll to hit. It's a roll, attack roll. That is your hits and your wound and yes. your save, because there is no save all in one. Once again, dice economy, very cool. However, I noticed my basic Iron Golem dudes that have, like the Legionnaires that have a shield, they have toughness five. It's so good. And they're like 50 points. Like, if I had the models, I would just take 10 of those guys and, you know, and one really cool guy. Because toughness five is so good. Because in this game, when you roll strength, the fist by your weapon, against the toughness of the model, it is, if they're equal, just like GW, typical, four or greater, 
Sixes are crits. Sixes are always crits. Uh, if they're less than, you need a five. So that's the hard part. Most guys are rolling in with strength three, maybe four. You go up against a five toughness guy, you always need five or sixes. It's so difficult sometimes. Um, and if your strength is greater than toughness, then a three, four, and five would hit. Six is still crit. We talk about the crit because look at the last column, that broken skull next to the weapon. So that she's got a, a club and a, uh, a ranged weapon. Three inch range is that first one there. That's the number of dice you roll the sword. Fist is the strength. The last one is when you roll a crit, it's the second number. If you roll a hit, it's the first number. Um, that's it. Very easy to use stat cards. No words on there. Doesn't matter where you play this game. If Biron, I mean, he's a world traveler. We already know that. Um, Biron, every couple of years, he goes to a third world country to try to leave it a better place than when he got there. You know, like third world countries like England and France. <laughs> if he wants to bust yeah. it up, he's like, you know what? Suitcase opens, war cry terrains inside, friends instantly. They don't, there's no words. They're not, they're no longer bound by languages. We have symbols and, and every other language, like however they say fuck is the same thing because it's like, fuck, they all look the same. They're still mad. All the languages are mad about that, but it's all symbol based. All the stat cards, so you can use them wherever. That was the whole thing. Um, it's a little weird because I, it'd be cool to know the name sometimes of, of a model, but whatever. It, I guess it doesn't matter if they're your army in Age of Sigmar or you built them in here, you, you know who they are anyway. But um, that's kind of the basics of the game. Um, that's the stats of the game. And you're trying to achieve your mission. And usually it's you know, something relatively random. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, I mentioned about the wounds thing. So I played it the other night. And the Ogre Breacher has 30 wounds. The Kurnoff Hunter leader has 35 wounds. You're tracking that, and it's like, it reminds me of the first edition of Wild West Exodus when I had Wyatt Earp and he had like 40 wounds, and I was doing tick marks on the card, and it was just like, how come other skirmish games can do, you're fine, you're injured, you're dead? Why couldn't this game get that done? Because whatever you use, if you wanna use dice, that's fine too, but if you're using the tokens from the game, here's another fuck up. Since we're doing that. Here's your one, one wound, double-sided is a three. There's no twos in the game. Every time I'm like, where the fuck are the twos? I go through the handfuls, where are the twos? There's no fucking twos. Every time. Couldn't throw a couple twos in there? Hashtag, I want my twos. Um, it becomes like the John Oliver show when he throws a hashtag in there. You have the five, and then you have a 10. I'm okay with that, but I want my twos, and I'd love a three. Not even asking for a four. Why'd they do a one and three? Mike, any idea? Because you can use two ones for a two. But I already have a bunch of counters. Give me some fucking twos. Why do I need 30 ones or 30 threes for that matter? I guess to make it easier. Uh... No, the answer is don't fucking defend them. All right. Don't defend the bastards. They Don't know ask me to defend them. I know I did. They know, <laughs> they know what they did. Yeah, want, they know. I want my twos. Anyway. Um, I think it looks fine without twos. <laughs> you're trying to kill my ogre, and I got to tally up to 30 wounds before he dies. Are you trying to defend the nickel? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, we don't, but when we're dealing with change, it's like a one-time thing. You're either getting change or you're using change. This is wounds on a thing. <laughs> you probably should use a dial or a dice or something else. Um, I will tell you this to the skirmish veterans here. I don't like putting stuff on a card. Put it on the card, as they say. Um, if this was like a unit card for one of my guys, and like, you know, he's back by my area, so I got all my cards laid out here. You guys like doing that, like putting wound tokens on them? I don't because I always forget. I don't either because especially since if I'm playing against you and I'm attacking your model, I have to go, oh, by the way, how many wounds does this guy have? Because totally. sometimes I think he's got like three wounds on him when he's – or I think he's got ten wounds on him he's only got three. And yeah. So do you put him by the model then? That causes a mess too. Well, I agree. You know, 
I, I don't mind. I don't mind counters on the table. I know it's weird because I usually have the don't take me out of the element, but I don't mind counters on the table. I just, we were playing the other day and I had so many because he's hacking yeah. away at my ogre and I eventually cashed him in the tens, but it also is not my top priority to make sure I'm, I'm being counter efficient. You know, I don't really care. So it was like one, one, three, one, one, three. And then eventually I'm like, let's throw a five out there. Yes, you could cash them in and 10 and then 20. I just think it's dumb. Like why, why did they go with the huge amount of wounds stand in, in this game when other skirmish games, even um, I know Biron's not a big fan of Nancy games, but dead zone, uh, it was, you're fine, you're injured, you're dead. Other things will affect whether you survive other stuff. Wild West Exodus, I brought that, I brought that up earlier. First edition, it was a fuck ton of wounds. And like I said, I had like legendary Wyatt Earp, but it was like, Jesus, come on. My dry erase kind of was running out of ink in there. Um, they re-released version two, and it was, I, I think I'm right on this. You're fine, you're injured, you're dead. Because there's a fuck ton of other skills and abilities that let you dodge away and do this and do this. I don't like that they said, we always do wounds, let's keep doing wounds. Like, well, yeah, in, in a battle game, most models have one wound, maybe two, and then the big guy is four or five. But to have every model have a shit ton of wounds, I don't think that's very efficient, and this game's whole thing was efficient. Discuss. Yeah, they should have done it where your base guys have one, lieutenants have two, and then your big guys have five. Yeah. Just scale, you could do wounds, just scale it down. So it's only three rounds. So, and I'm not defending them, but I'm telling you, if you change that to something normal, like you just said, now you have to change the stat line we just looked at. Yep. Because that stat line tells you how many wounds it inflicts. What do you that's do then? That's what my counter argument is going to be. Like the whole, it works all together because your attack is doing multiple wounds. So then you have more of a variance on what you can do for different weapon types and different things there. I don't think it's, I don't like it the way it is. Well, if you went in with a super elite warband extreme, and it, it, it just gets a bit annoying when you got to Biron's point, a bunch of little goblin archers poking at you every turn, and they're not going to get anywhere anyway, but let's just say they wanted to try to take down the big, the big beast, whatever. But it's kind of annoying, just like tallying up. Do you, do you like, I know you're the stats man, do you like record keeping like that? But if he only had two wounds, then two little goblins can come up and poke him twice and he dies. Well, no, because if you only had two wounds, then we had to overhaul the whole system. It does work together. It's part of the game. Don't get me wrong. I'm not asking for them to say, do away with 30 wound models, because that's how all the stats go into it. It's you're rolling dice. You're doing multiple attacks. That's number one. The stat card said how many dice you roll. That could be altered. The stat card said strength versus toughness. That's fine, because that's just a this versus that thing. That's not a... a quantitative kind of thing then you go to the number of wounds that's the big one that last stat there the ogre dishes out i think it's like four on a hit and eight on a crit yes awesome. not everybody's an ogre most of them do like one four or, you know it's it's i'm just I not think, a fan of that i think as a game mechanic it's great and it all works together but from like a cleanliness of the table i see where you're coming from and i think like a dial next to the guy would be the ideal yeah. way of doing it just yeah. have a wounds dial next to the model so that way everyone knows how about how clicks on the base oh. <laughs> but i wouldn't spell it with a c you know s like you see how, and i, I want to change the spelling of clicks to make it your own like just maybe see up, like um maybe call it uh, lurps Ham, hammer clicks and it's C L Y X. Just a thought. Trademark. <laughs> Take it. Pat and Pat. Yeah. Um, extreme, you're totally right. I, I, I get what you're saying. It is a cleanliness thing. It is, if we had a dial on the board, listen, none of us are getting any younger. I still got to ask you, what does that say? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, if, but, if we want to use fucking <laughs> dials, I want to, like, we need to have fucking dials. Like, hold, yeah. hold on, how many wounds you do? <laughs> I need a fucking dial, but these things are like this, and I can't see them half the time. You got to be right over them to see them. I'm just not a fan. I would rather know, are you fine? Are you injured? Which, fine is no token. Injured is blood. Dead is off the table. Love that. 
Give me a game where those are your three statuses. That's auto Slurpee right there. That's one auto Slurpee if your three statuses are fine, injured, dead. Necromunda did it. They did, uh, they did it. There are some multiple wound characters, but for the most part, it's fine, injured, or fine flesh wound, dead, whatever. Um, that's but that's because they're that's gangers. Good. What if what if there was like a space marine in Necromunda? How then many you, don't, you don't play that person. You walk away. You <laughs> say the 40k night is on Fridays. Okay. Does it lose half a Slurpee though because of those three symbols that look identical and I have to do this? <laughs> so I, I do like it, while we're talking about wounds and the whole combat phase, I really like because I don't like the normal Games Workshop way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Or you're rolling a bucket of dice to hit, pain. then you roll half of those to wound, and then the other Feel guys no pain. Look out, sir. Yeah, and then nothing happens. Like, cool. <laughs> like, when someone when rolls die, 40 roll. dice and not a single model dies. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. Or yeah. in this game, you roll the dice, something's going to happen. I will tell you, that guy that's rolling 40 dice and nothing happens, he clearly hasn't played the meta. You need to buff the shit out of those 40 dice to make sure they do something. <laughs> uh, that's all I'm saying. Make those orc attacks count. Uh, I totally get where you're coming from, Extreme. I just, it's, it's got its own thing. It is not a typical GW game. It's got its own flavor. You know, you are one role to do multiple things, special actions like we talked about, all this cool stuff. But then the record keeping annoys the shit out of me. So this game is filled with, uh, for me, it's filled with um, quandaries. Is that the right word? Or paradoxes, maybe? Um, that every time I like something, then I get it irritated. Every time I think something's cool, then I think something's dumb. And it's back and forth all the time. And it upsets me because I really want to love this game. And I know I don't want to uh, pre-sell the ratings, but um, that's one issue with me with this one is every time it's like a win and a, everything keeps getting evened out for me in this game. Um, other, other, than, other than the wounds, what other record keeping is there? Let me think of something. Hold on. <laughs> um, that, tray that you have? That tray's fantastic. Uh, I this. agree. I I was envious the first that time I one, with one of those trays. I was like, I want to get one of those. And I I, I played my first when Warcry came out. Um, played a game like the next or a couple of days. I built the terrain, um, and then I immediately was like, someone has to have something. And I immediately, now there's a bunch, but I think at the time there was like one Etsy seller and I bought like two of these for like 12 bucks. There's probably better ones now, but it, it serves its purpose. It's clear to read. You don't have to paint it. It's not resin, it's wood. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean- How's the smell? It's, it's, How's the smell on it? That's pretty good. Now it's, it's lost a little bit. It's like if, if Biron said um, to a kid, you don't know me and it is stranger danger, but I'll help you with your Pinewood Derby car for scouts. <laughs> Let me tell you, kids. Like I gotta go home. My mom's calling me. Um, <laughs> That's when the, the doors lock in the van. Yeah, it's not quite a threat. Like if you were to go to who's the guy that did the King's Award, Ironheart Artisans. Yeah. Great, uh, company do counters. Right off the bat, hot off the presses, the best smell you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. uh, an old Pinewood Derby car and beer on in, in in his in his basements that might rape you. Not the best smell. <laughs> Uh, so that's that. So to answer your question, extreme, what other record keeping? I, there probably isn't any. It's, no. not, it's not that bad. And I'm not trying to shit on it. I'm just saying, if you had the the majority of models in the game are, I think, between eight and twelve wounds. Uh, yeah, that's eight between eight and twelve wounds. For to most me, of it seems like a lot. I, if I was in the the rules creation side of it, I would have said. We don't want to, why do we want to inflate that number just to make everything else work? Couldn't we start with a, like they always do, you always take like a base guy, right? Like game, Games Workshop takes Space Marine or Guardsman and then you go from there. Why don't you take a but, basic guy? I don't know, like, you know, uh, Orc Warrior or Human, whatever. Base stats, let's just make him one wound. Let's just start with one. Okay, it's well, a good spot to start. Make your rules work with the one, then uh, you know, pad it up from there. But to have your basic guy be like t 10 or 12 wounds, that seems not the most efficient to me. But if your attack's doing four or five 
wounds for each attack, then you could look at that guy as having three. Depends on who's attacking. Um, the ogre, right, but it also depends on who he's attacking. That's why the whole system works, because it gives you this huge range of flexibility. And there's also basically, if you ignore the range attacks, there's basically attacks that have a one inch range and a three inch range. Yeah. And the three inch range ones do less damage. So, all, all valid points. It's just um, whenever you have a, a you you're don't starting like a lot off, of wounds. What? You just don't like a lot of wounds. Listen, I probably played more for <laughs> Pride than all of them. How about that? Um, I'm just saying, for everything they do good, there's a counterpoint. And I, I really want to put it up there as like a, a top tier game for me. But there's certain things that get a little annoying. And Everybody gets annoyed at different things in games. Biron doesn't like to look people in the eye when he's playing them. <laughs> he also doesn't look them in the eye when he's doing them either. Exactly. Um, that's his other thing. Um, it's from behind. You can't look him in the eye from behind. He's the, he's the, king, of, the king of the disinterested hand job, if you will. Um, he's just he's doing his own thing. Uh, I like a lot of the game. Don't get me wrong. But it's just that would be kind of cool if they had a little bit of a – a streamlined system of that. That's all. I have, I have another question for, I haven't played the game yet. I've read a lot about it. So for people that have played it, the measuring and that I really like how simple it is as far as just measuring vertically, climbing up things, going over gaps. Did that present any problems when you're playing though? Or like I mean, jumping not, over a gap? Not against normal players. I, I bet you there's a stickler out there that'll bust you on some shit though, because some of the model, like you can, you can move, you can climb and you can jump across stuff um i bet you that there's some people that might get you when you're like you know when you move around a corner you know, maybe you're doing a double move whatever i mean i think it's cool and i think it's pretty easy um the one thing i got a little hung up on i i think there's something about and maybe you guys know when you're fighting near terrain like i have to be closer to it than you are but then on your movement turn you have to move closer to me. So then you also move closer to the terrain. And now you're touching the wall and I'm like a millimeter from the wall. There's a little bit of fiddle, fiddliness. Is that the bear on word? Did yeah. you remember that with terrain a little bit or no? There's a little bit of that and a little bit of the you're on the top and I can crawl up, attack you. But since the terrain doesn't let me stay there, I fall down. Mm -hmm. The end. Yeah, the so, model has to be able to. It's got the anti wobbly model. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. in the rules. You got to do yeah. that. Oh yeah, because they say you can't, you can't, uh, you can't be in the middle of a ladder, right? But you have to be up or down. Yeah, and you on some of the terrain, you if it's not like flat, you can't stay up there. So I can crawl up and attack you, but then I fall down at the end. And again, like you said with the terrain, how you know if where you end up in your movement kind of def uh, depends on if you're getting cover or not. And I think that's why the, the initial terrain set works well, because models actually stand on it just fine where they should, whereas the I mean, other gets, nope. There, there's a few spots that are yeah, like, 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 yeah, right. But for the most part, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, it's, you're like, it's, is it a window? Is it a door? That's easy. Is this, can I stand on this? Cool. I could stand on that. Um, it's pretty clear cut. I'm just Isn't saying, there one where if you get hit near a ledge, do you got to roll a die to see if you fall? Yeah, there's yeah. falling as well. Um, I'm just saying this is one of those games where I like – this is a game where you, if you play against people you know, people you're friendly with, you don't get too caught up into it. I bet you there might be some arguments in this one. I guess to, oh, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. sort of answer your question, Extreme, there's not really a lot of issues, but there's measuring, there's climbing, and there's weird terrain. How do you not have an issue every now and then, right? I mean, it, it, there shouldn't be. Is there any game that really got moving up elevation right that you know of? I mean, outside of, with, without, what, well, without a grid, I don't know how to answer it. If okay. you add any elements of a grid or hexes to any yeah. game, you're, you're cutting that part out of it. Nip it in the bud. It's fantastic. I mean, if I was going to make a battle game, it'd be a giant fucking hex board. Like, why wouldn't I? Why, you never have to measure anything. I, I just think, like, with elevation, it should just be – don't have special rules for fly and jump and climb. Just, like, measure straight up. If you could get there at the end of your measurement, you get up there. No movement penalty. Just you're up there. 
Whereas we I was don't. like, oh, you go movement in half, you lose half your movement going up a level. So but there's oh, models move. that fly though in the game. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. If I made a game, I'd say no. Get rid oh. of that fly shit. Just so, take the measure stick and go, yes, I make it. So if we were playing beer on cry, if you will. Yeah. Um, and I, that could be many different things. That could be just somebody's state of mind after every game they play with you. Yeah. I, I just suffered beer on cry. Um, a tear. I didn't even know it's coming. I felt it. And yep. it emotion. Rolled down your cheek like the Native American when you pull right. it. I didn't feel like I was crying, but I felt I was crying. That's how it is to play you in games. Um, you're playing beer on cry, sure. But in this game, they want to try to mirror as many, uh, I guess, be as real as you can with that faction and what they do. The Cypher Lords fly. That's their thing, right? That the, the master makes them do stuff. Um, there's probably actual uh, Age of Sigmar factions that also fly too. Is that true, Mike? The Caradon Overlords do. They uh, the balloon guys. Oh, yeah. They, also the, the Deepkin do. They have the eels. So it's going to be part of it. I just think that um, extreme, initially, you know, you asked about is, is that a problem? I mean, not really, but again, it's just going to be kind of, um, you might have to pick some things out. It's like with any game where you measure and there's terrain. You got to, you got to call it. When I play 40K, I say, that's a building anywhere on there is covered. That's a hill. It doesn't do anything. Like we, you have those talks. I'd like to think that, you know, Biron said, could you just show up and play anybody? You should be able to, but I don't know if, you might have to go over something terrain-wise. What else you got? You want more, more questions? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> All day. Um, I do want to bring something up that I read. I don't know. You guys probably have more information on it, but the additional packs of cards for the other things, I read that they were being released and you've got like in the case 12 Stormcast and then like one of the other factions. It's a mix. So if you're a game store, you went to buy one of the other factions, most of the box they got was Stormcast. I think that was the case initially. Like, I don't even understand what, what, you're, what you're talking about. I, when you're a non were like there were like foil packs of the cards for something. No, no, no. Uh, there was, you know what's in there. Huh? there. So when you buy a pack of cards, and maybe, I, maybe I, I'm missing out on another release, but if you play, uh, Mike plays uh, Dwarf, Troll, whatever, the Fire Slayers, you buy that pack. It's not a foil pack. It's, it's big enough to fit this big card. No. That's what I'm saying. But in the box of packs, they were saying right, there's the like shipment, storm they ship way them. more Stormcasts than the other faction, like oh. a retail box. Right. They so when you went to your game store, there's going to be a bunch of Stormcasts sitting there, and they're not going to be too inclined to buy another box because they have half a box already. Yeah. So they couldn't order individual, like, I need two so, Gloom Spire gets, I need this, been, this. You may have forgot. I know you created Slurpee and all this, but you may have forgot what this show is. Um, that sounds like a question for the Grognard cast about game, for game store owners. I don't give a shit how many packs came in a box. Is that what I'm you I'm a customer, me? you get what I want. No, I'm, all I'm saying is I want to be able to buy the shit when I go to the store. And if my store manager owner isn't going to buy any more of these boxes because they got a box and they have a shit ton of Stormcast packs that no one will buy from them, then it creates a problem for me. Now I have to go on the internet and track down the pack I want. Are you trying to say you've never gone online to buy something for gaming on the record brand? No, I wasn't. He wants to support his local game store. Saying, you, should, you should make my purchases as easy as possible. I'm giving yeah, you my money. I had, that, I had read that initially too, but I've never had any problem buying the packs I wanted. So okay. See, that's all I was asking. We, we have a problem. Where, it's really a problem. You know, made it sound like, like foil packs, like fucking blind buys and shit. And like, no, I got more land cards. I started off and I said, what I read on the internet, I don't know if this is true. And I was asking you guys. I wasn't trying to make it sound like anything. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Um, I you have to ask Rognards, but he, the only games he cares about is uh, Magic. And Magic. Magic. And he just doesn't give a shit about. So. Um, I think all the, all the Warcry factions come with cards in the box, right? Yes. Okay. So if you, if you play one of the eight, like... You did know, it come with everything, or did you have to buy the boxes to get the other? You had to buy the boxes to get it. Yeah, yeah it only came with two. Only came with the golems and the beasts. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I meant so. If you're playing Cipher Lords, you buy the box. Some people buy two because you might want to. I don't. 
depends on who you play. If you play in a, a, a campaign that you build up maybe, but for most of the time, because you want cool models, everyone's got like eight or less, I think, usually. Around eight's usually the number it's kind of the, that I've seen. Um, yeah. Only if you're like, if you're a hardcore mid-match, you're like, well, I want four of these guys, not two, so I'm buying a second yeah. box. I want four of the best Stormcast guy. Fine, whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, I never had a problem buying them. Like Mike said, I bought the Undead one. I have the Beastmen one because I have some Beastmen, and I have the Sylvaneth. Um, they were all readily available whenever I wanted them. So. Um, yeah. Maybe. And there's other, there's other there. expansions too, right? I saw other books and stuff. It, there it seemed like yeah, there was a lot of stuff out there. Extreme. You really keep. I mean, you first you derailed the show with your blind box. <laughs> now, you, like, I mean, I'm not a train guy. Biron's a train guy, but you brought us back on the tracks of this. And yeah. there is a book. Um, I bought it. Oh, there's two books. Oh, two. I did not buy that one yet. I bought the Beast one. Monster. Uh, monster. Yeah, this one? Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't used it yet, but apparently there's rules for monsters, right? Yeah. Well, there is in the core book, too. We've got the expanded campaign rule. Oh, Biron, thank you for bringing that up. Before we jump into those books, we didn't even talk about that. There's another really cool thing that this game does that's totally unique from all GW games. They have it's random players that if you pick, it's not the right card, but if you pick the, the mission that says, Oh, by the way, I know you're set up over there and you're set up over there and you think you guys are going to fight. Well, now there's like these, whatever they're called, Splintax, Sprintax, whatever those beasts are whatever called. Whatever copywritten name they came up with. <laughs> right. I don't know what it's called. It's like a weird name, bunch of X's in there. That's now like a neutral thing attacking you that is, you don't know what it's going to do. It might fuck up your plans as well. It might not be there at all, but it also might be there. So they added that to the core rules of the game, which I thought was really cool. Not an expansion, that's part of the game. If you draw that one, and assuming you're not playing beer on where he says, sounds too complicated, Throw, get rid of it. Like, if you want to play it, <laughs> you drew the card, you want to play it, you have the models there and you can play it. And I think it's kind of cool if they put that in. I never like, bring the models because I don't want to play with it too, too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so, what if your opponent brought them? Ah, yeah, I'll just the smash them on the on the table. <laughs> so you don't have them now. Ten skin tanks ready to go. And you're like, I still don't want to use the fucking tax. <laughs> that was from Magic Tavern, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what they're actually called. I should probably look it up. They're in the rule book, but in our campaign, Mike, didn't you get some on your team eventually? The or was that because you could actually have them on your team. Yeah, yeah, because you, you get, like, when you, uh, in the campaign, when you level up or whatever. You, you guys did a campaign? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Cool. How did that work? It was, was there a lot of people with, like, really large war bands towards the end? I think the campaign was a little bare bones in the first iteration. The campaign rules in the initial rule book are a little weak. Uh, they expand on it in the third book and it makes it a little better, but it's still, it, now one of the problems with Mordheim is once you start winning, it steamrolls and you just keep winning. And I think, uh, Warcry tries to even that out and I think it does a decent job of that, but it also kind of makes... You know, the, the advances really aren't that significant. So it, both it, good it, and bad. It, they, they want to try to eliminate the, the, the rich getting richer, poor get poor thing that happened. Exactly, exactly. They want to eliminate that. And they might have went so far, once again, my recurring theme of trying something different and then sort of fucking it up. They might have went so far that it almost makes your advances kind of like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a reroll. <laughs> Or you get like 25 extra points, which so, might make you be able to get like a, one of the gargoyle-like things. But So as I mentioned earlier, the, the rules for the game are like 15, 16 pages. Um, what most of this book is, is extra missions. So you've got the hunger of Isfis. Isfis? Uh, cold Vengeance. These are all old WWE pay-per-view names. Cold Vengeance. <laughs> Venom of the Gods with Batista. Um, they're not super in-depth, like you said, Mike. Do you think they're going to release a, a 
real campaign book? No. That's not really where people are playing this game mostly. Do you think it's one-offs? Yeah, or it's it's basically like who's getting the most wins and losses. I kind of like the – from what I read of the campaign rules, I like them. I think um, campaign rules generally are overrated. Like everybody thinks they have to have them. They love campaigns, but then you start playing a campaign, you're like, eh, I really just want to play a series of games. Yeah, that's kind of what this feels well, like. There's also there's that, but there's also everybody wants campaign rules, and then they don't ever play campaigns because right. playing a campaign is there's so many moving parts. Getting the, the right people is the, the biggest one. Who's going to run it? Are you going to show up every week? I mean, everybody always demands them in every game. When are you campaign rules? Like, slow down, everybody. First, find some friends, step one. Because when you do that, then you can play a campaign. Until then, don't fucking ask for shit you're never gonna use. Because they're always the unused section in the book. That's the section that doesn't have any like thumb curls like when you, when you bend a book open. Because no one looks at the campaign rules unless someone says, wanna do a campaign? Sure, but I ain't running it. Great, I don't even have to crack the fucking book. <laughs> the only reason I made it to the back of this book is Name generators. No, I don't care. Um, but <laughs> is that that is the dumbest waste of paper space in every book? I, I agree. And like when uh, Kill Team came out, they're like, "Oh, this is using the D10 and all of that." And the, and the, D10, D10, the fucking well, name generator. The D10 it? was name generator. That's what what's it was for. Dumber? What's dumber? Now I like a good name generator, but I can get it online too for free. Exactly. Um, I don't know. Because, you know, I, I have a Raven Guard army and I wanted to stick with the lore. So their names are a little different. They're not as Roman sounding as the Ultra. I get it. It could be online. But what's worse? Wasting pages for a name generator. They're telling me I better roll a fucking dice to use. Yeah. You know what, I, know what name generator I use? It's right here. <laughs> Dave <laughs> Hernandez. Dave Hernandez is a free to tell. Yeah, that's what, all, your, all, your, all your models are named after people you ran into at fast food restaurants. I yeah. mean, it's like, who are you? Cool, you're in, you're in my war band. Like, they're just, you know, to be fair, Biron, you don't use real names. You don't follow the lore with me. There has, so in the, the infinite universe of trillions of people in, in Warhammer 40K, yeah, but are you, you telling me there's no one named Slippery Patel? No, I'm telling you that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, you know... Oh, the chaos is a Slanesh cultist for sure. Yes. Mike, I will tell you, Mike plays by the rules. If Mike was doing a fantasy campaign, he's going to name his demon Aganash Kumar with three apostrophes in there. And, <laughs> and it would have a true name that he would know, but we're not well, it, Say it, you fucking die instantly or something. Like, he'll have that written in the fluff. Whereas you're going to call your guy Ted. And it's like, what the fuck is Ted doing here? You're going to tell me? In the eight points of war cry, there's no Ted's. <laughs> Don't defend that. You know what? You're gonna if you have a flesh eater counts for man, you're gonna name your guy Vusher the Noble. His name is Vusher. Vusher. And you fucking like it. I'm gonna call him Fruit Gusher is what I'm gonna call him. <laughs> Gusher. And once again, to keep the theme going, Mike, is that P? Anyway. Um, <laughs> so I think that we could um, Biron and Mike, I didn't realize you guys played a campaign. It's awesome. I played a bunch of one-offs. Extreme hasn't played at all. Um, anything else we need to cover on the game, or do you think we should move on to the final ratings? I will. I like the boards. I like the boards. Oh, yeah. That's good. So double-sided cardboard board. It's two by three, right? Is it is it uh, the same size as Kill Team? Yeah. Yeah. 22 by 30 or something weird oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you can't use real. They, yeah, they, they got to trademark the fucking inches, too. It's 23.8 by 31.6. Got it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make sense in in inches or metrics, so yeah. yeah. The base board in the game has one, like, uh, sandy kind of chaos runes, and then, a like, a blue one that's kind of just like a wintry board. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Do the other packs come with boards? Yes. With yes. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Um, it's, uh, yeah, that I like. It, but, but that's why I make it's like, just like Kill Team, they're doing the same type of release strategy. Yeah. yeah. Like I almost wish they did Kill Team Necromunda like that, you know? If they had, you could use Necromunda gangs in Kill Team. Yeah, I think, uh, well. Did they ever release rules for Warcry models in Age of Sigmar? Because they did for Underworld. They did. 
Mm. All of the the initial six Chaos War bands are now in Age of Sigmar, mm. and I've never played them. But from what I read, they're mediocre at best. Well, that was the same with the the Underworld ones that they released. Yeah, they're just kind of yeah. fun. Yeah, they're and it's kind of like um, their uh, Warhammer Quest games. So Quest and whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is. Blackstone Fortress and War yeah. Silver. Like there's worse, but like you know, the 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 preacher in there is not going to win the fucking game. Right. It's there to tick a box, is what right. it is. He's, but I appreciate it anyway. Because you painted them already yeah. on your other thing, and now you want to use it for this thing. Yeah. Totally get it. Kind of like when you guys were talking about um, Riot Quest, right? Same kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. using this guy because he's painted. Well, no matter what. Um. So cool boards, cool terrain, uh, innovative rules. Um. I think we covered most everything on it. Um, if you play Age of Sigmar already, and somebody at the game store or in your club says, why don't you try Warcry, you've got nothing to lose except maybe a $12 pack of cards. Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's all you need. Grab your favorite models. You can pick, you know, one of each. You know, I think most of them have like, you know, that's five different things. Most of them have around four or five. Yeah. Uh, some of them they split, right? Like orcs have two, dwarves have two. They have multiple. You have fire slayers and overlords, and you have bone whatever and the uh, oryx yeah. elite guys. Yeah. So you could do that. Um, some people were talking about using Warhammer Underworlds models and repurposing them. You could totally use that because they're kind of individualistic anyway. Problem is, all of those usually equal about half a warband. So mm -hmm. pretty much every Underworld warband is like half of what you need in Warcry. So you can do that. Say you really like your um, your Beastmen you got, add a couple minutes horse and you're good. Or you really like your Stormcast, add, add the crossbow dude and you might be good because they're expensive. So I saw people talking about that because those models are pretty badass and they have a very uh, individual look to them. So if you wanted to play a campaign and said, this is Ted, Ted meet Vushor the Noble, the ghoul, you guys are now linked. <laughs> You can have people who look like Ted and Vushor the Noble. Well, it's also it, just like Kill Team. It gives you an excuse. Like, I would never want to play a full fish elf army, but I'll buy the Get Started box and make a little Warhammer Warband out of it. Yeah, it's a fair point. I mean, it's um, there have been times where my most of the Kill Team games I played weren't with the same factions I play 40k with. Oh yeah, like my favorite Kill yeah. Team is uh, uh, what are the Alien Hunter Space Marines? Oh, Death uh, Death Watch. Yeah. Death Watch. Yeah. I never want to play a full army of them, but right. one box of guys, sure. Yeah, it's cool for that. So I think um, this is the same thing. Um, I do think, like we said at the beginning, the game is designed to use the ones that are centered around. Yes. Because if you're playing a campaign, I'd like to think that if you've got a Valdrick that's running it and he's coming up with some story that we're meeting up at the eight points tonight, guys, um, why are the Stormcast there again? That doesn't make sense. Well, you see, I don't want to see. Just fuck it. You want to use them. I get it. Use them. It's, it's, a, it's a game for chaos lovers to get into a, a chaos culty kind of game. Look at those models of the, the basic eight. Look at the, the unmade. Look at the iron golems. Like, it's They're all cool. awesome. Badass looking chaos models. Um, it's really cool. They're all sort of undivided. So if you like that style where for years you always had to pick a lane, either be Am I doing boobs? Am I doing Egyptian? Am I doing gross stuff? Am I doing blood? Like, you always had to pick a lane with everything. This is the first time where GW is like, you know what? Let's focus on just, like, ugliness in all of its beauty, if you will. And what if there were kind of chaos ninjas? What if there were chaos druids? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If, I mean, look at, look at the Splinter Fang. Those guys, I mean, they're just, like, gladiatory type. That, you know, they have the mess. Yeah, they're, they're total gladiators. And they don't have anything like that in the line when you think there about isn't it. Already, which is yeah. weird because it's, it's, GW has gone away from typical fantasy things, right? Like, do they actually have straight up elves anymore? Straight up just elves. Uh, they're com yeah, they're redoing the high elves, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're the the el the the. But aren't they the deep kid? The deep kin and they're bald. Well, no, there's you have your blood blood elves basically, with, and then you have your fish elves, okay. and then you've got the new ones that are in the the realm of light. Yeah, those are like high elves, right? 
Yeah, those are the, basically the high elves. Yeah, so they do. They just started doing kind of standard elves. Okay, but they're cool. also kind of they. They're the big dude is a beast guy, so it's oh. it's. It, it, it's Sigmar. You have to have giant models. That's part yeah, of the world. Yeah. That's that's a that's a staple of Age of Sigmar. Is you better, <laughs> you better like painting these hundred and twenty dollar kits that are a thousand pieces, and you're going to spend a lot. You better like doing it because every army has one. Or you get the new Gargant's army that's just those. Oh, really? I didn't see that. Wow. They, they are the the Imperial I, Knights yeah, of Age of Sigmar. I just want dudes on a table, man. It's all well, now you just have three dudes on a table, and it's all you need. <laughs> it's like, well, why don't we just, if you're going to have three big ones, why don't we have a whole army of those? Arms race, let's buy 30 yeah. of them. Um, extreme, anything else? Because you, you are very intrigued of Warcry. You chose this topic. You wanted to learn more about it. You think it's very interesting. We've all played it. We've had some ups. We've had some downs. What, what else do we need to talk about on this one? What else do you personally want to know about this one? Um, I don't think we need to talk about anything else. I think we covered it pretty well. Um, it is some, a game that I'm very interested in, and I don't know. It, I'm, it's a very complicated – it's a very simple game, I'm not saying that, but my feelings towards this game are very complicated. I, I went back and forth. I was thinking about ratings, like you said, all night, because these are the things – you know, there's real-world problems going on right now, and I'm up, <laughs> I'm up at 2 a.m. thinking – Three and a half slurpees. I would say that's the most important issue right now. <laughs> it is so, the one that we can have the most impact on. So yes. Well, that's true. <laughs> for us, it's the ones that we can. You know, I may not be able to change the world, but I can give a damn slurpee rating. You know, <laughs> I, can do that. I can do that. God give me the wisdom to accept the things I cannot change. The wisdom to know which I can. Something. Something. I give it three. Um. Wait, we're, already? Oh, no, I was just, that's not oh, my book. Oh. <laughs> From the book of a goof breaking self? Yes, as a goof, it gets three. As a goof. Well, I kept going, I kept saying, okay, so then I put it here. Well, no, then this happened. Well, no, but this. And it was a lot of those for me. So. We've rated enough where I'm now starting to think, like, is it better than this game I rated here? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad we did it. I'm actually... At first, I was a little, not, not annoyed, but I was a little surprised that we went so obscure to start our games because I thought it'd be a weird baseline, but it's fine because there are, every game can be judged against every other game. Like it doesn't have, we don't have to judge games against 40K or against, you know, on the board game side, like Zombicide. We don't have to pick the big ones. You can judge any game against any other one. The fact that we covered some obscure ones is kind of cool because now that we're getting into well-known ones or at least, at least one you're going to see in a game store, guaranteed. Like Warcraft. Games Normies play. Normies, yeah. I mean, let's not forget. There's something to be said. Again, we didn't, we didn't talk about it this episode, but I want to bring it up before we get our ratings there. All these other game episodes we, we've covered, we talk about the models, the mechanics. We talk about everything. We talk about accessibility, too, and getting the game in a store. Let's not forget this is Games Workshop. And if you want to find some people to play, you'll find them. Like, they're out there. It's a good thing. I, think. I don't know. I, I have some things to say about that when I get to my ranking. Ooh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, without getting into the ratings, this is in the category, though, because Games Workshop has two categories, in my opinion. They have, they're, they're both categories of games will be sold at most game stores. You're going to, you're going to, if you want to find them, you're going to get them. If you want to find players, you'll have an easier time finding players of that than a game from some company you never heard of or lower on the list, we'll say. Yeah. But where, where it divides is, generally speaking, you find cooler normies playing the side games, to use a beer on term, which I hate it. hate that I said side game. Mm -hmm. What if Warcry becomes Extreme's number one game? What if he gets a Warcry jersey? No, nah, there's no Warcry jersey. What about a Warcry tattoo of the, yeah. of the symbols that all look the oh, same? Yeah. So then he looks like, you know, <laughs> The chaos star that means I, I punch you with this hand. Three different chaos stars that mean three different things. <laughs> and he no, it, it, it's That's this like, one, not this one. Yeah. He brings the tattoo guy, and he's like, I can't do that. I'm like, why? He's like, I, I can't tell the difference between. You look the, the same. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, fuck your rune marks. Get out of my store, nerd. Um, so anyway, what I found is sometimes you might find a cooler player playing Necromunda rather than 40K. 
playing war cry rather than age of sigma. Just a thought, it's not always the case. As we all know, there's dicks everywhere and there's a few cool people everywhere. Um, we know that. So I wanna throw that out there, but Extreme obviously will delve into his own experience. Um, I think it's time to go into the ratings as has become standard. Yes, we can do half halves. Halves. For this. And yes, we, we usually start with most experience to least. It's kind of been the way we've been doing it. Um, I thought I was most, but these guys played a campaign. So I'm gonna to defer to Biron and Mike for their Zerpy ratings. You go first, Mike. All right, I will give it a three and a half. Okay. Uh, I like the fluff. I like how it is not, you know, one of the four chaos gods specific as far as the fluff goes. I did not like how if you're playing just the initial six out of the box chaos, you know, warbands, there was very little mix and matching. You you got to play the guy with an axe and that's it. And uh, I think in a skirmish game, especially, you kind of want more of that individuality. I want to make my guy with an ax and this guy with a sword. And even if the rules aren't different. Uh, well, I, they usually I, do a little bit, like um, just, just enough. So there'll be a guy with a shield and ax, then yeah. a guy with two axes. Or if you and I are both playing unmade, I want my unmade to look different from your unmade. And yeah. what's going to make them different in this game is how we paint them. Yeah, I mean, would you or say... Or not paint them. Or not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. With the initial Chaos ones, it's... They're the same... Mo they're the, the models on the card is what you're playing. Now, could I use any skeleton to represent the, the skeleton with the, the, the axe? I get sure, but yeah, to an extent... Would you have wanted like a roster, Mike? Just like, I want this, I want this, I want this. And or at least have weapon. like, you know, base models and then have like weapon cards that went underneath them. Like, you I like, an ar like an armory with it too. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Find a magic axe in a mission and then you can equip it on a dude. That'd be fun. Yeah. Do you think that if, um, not obviously from what you said about the campaign in the book, but if you were making your own, do you think somebody would just say, fuck it, I'm going to do that? I'll just do it. I'll just make my own. It's going to be based off the game. But you know what? If you want to play the Beast Man with a spear, I know there's no card for him. Let's just tweak that one because I think that's kind of what it is. I mean, it'd be, it's very much house rule, but it's yeah. kind of, uh, I think well, some... I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's, and it's easy to do because there's a lot of things you can draw from. But again, if you're playing outside of your group, then it's, you know, yeah, I mean, just like we did with that Kill Team campaign, all the bonus stuff I just made up, and it's not in the rules. You can do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I had a rule where Mike had to jerk off onto some elven uh, planes. Yeah, yeah, you I, have I, all kinds of weird stuff. If you show up and say the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, inside joke to Bill Taco Bill, you lose a point. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> now, we're, now we're, like, LARPing this? Yes. <laughs> exactly. Doug, I believe you came in and sat in the wrong stool. That's in there? Point. You get a shame yeah. point. Yeah, Biron would penalize you if you sat in the wrong booth at Uncle Bill's. Yes. Like, huh, minus one. All right, good rating, Mike. Anything else going into that? Uh, the models look great, even though they're not as, you know, individuality. Uh, the terrain is amazing. By far the best fantasy terrain out there. Even if some of the spiky bits are sharp as hell and you will hurt yourself assembling yeah, them. the one those little barricades oh my god i picked up mine the other day and i got it got uh stuck pretty bad what's really cool is and i didn't bring a ladder down here but i do like these little wood planks because the ladders go right into there yeah 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 so it's actually really like thought, thought out very well how they did it. and the pro assembly instructions not the gw ones but the ways the property build would say don't glue this ladder because you yeah, want to place it here in this no, no ladders no uh, walkways bridges whatever um yeah and there was a couple because you had like four big things and then the head the bell yeah. and then one little barricade or something so yeah you're right they said don't glue those things it's I, I do wish I had more ladders because I think there's only two in the box. Wouldn't have been nice if they gave you a few more. Um, do you, I don't remember this. Do you actually need ladders to climb up in the game or no? Because 
I don't think you actually do. So I actually wanted it to be in the rules to say, there better be a ladder there. I wanted it. And then I put two in the the last game I played and I looked it up and there was climbing rules, but there were no ladder rules. So it's just for aesthetics, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I would change that instantly. Boom. We're playing JP cry. And what's going to happen in this game is you better be base to base with that ladder. You know what's going to happen? Just like in every game, nobody climbs anything anyway. <laughs> in every other game anyway. Unless you say whoever hits the top first wins, ain't nobody climbing anything in any game. <laughs> it never happens. Unless you start there. And it's always, oh, how'd you get that tower in your deployment zone? Like, mm-hmm. I, s- I set up the board before you got here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> it wouldn't happen to you. Yeah, show up. Show up on time. And I sat here on this side of the table, and that's all that matters. So yeah, even though you I won put the my roll-off. hydra inside this building, well, you won the roll off, but you saw I had all my stuff out. And you felt bad for me, so you stayed there. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. So cool. All right, solid rating from Mike. Uh, Beer on is next. I'm gonna go two and a half. Ooh. Ooh. So those two and a half points, the thing I like best about the game are the new models they introduced with it. Um, I did not like a lot of the doubles, triples, uh, how, how only certain models could do it. And again, the symbols caused a problem with that. Um, aside you know, one, from the scenery. One thing on that beer on that we didn't talk about, what I found a lot too, especially with the Age of Sigmar ones, if you, build, if you bring models you think are cool, Sometimes half this list is, is gone. Yeah. Whereas if you use the ones that are part of the, the thing, the chaos ones, they're all, I mean, unless people die, they're pretty much all valid. But if you pick, like, I only want um, Ker- Kernoff guys, well, half of these are worthless then. Yep. Actually, with the uh, Iron Golems, I forgot, and I don't know the names of them, but... You, you, one of the options you have is to make one of the models this way or one of the models this way. And if you make it the, the wrong way, one of the options is not available to you. Yeah, I think yeah it's the same with the uh, Cypher Lords. Yeah. There's, I think there's one that's a regular dude, like two, two hammers or hammer and shield. But then there's also, do you want to do the standard bearer? Or do you want Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it, it that one. It's the, yeah. the standard bearer or the guy with his hand on the sword or something. Right? Yeah. And also right. the Cypher Lords, some of the models look almost identical. It's just how their swords are held, indicating yeah. one's different from the other. So that's kind of a problem for me. Yeah, the Cypher Lords are weird. I think uh, I, I like that they have, you know, well, it's pretty easy. That's the two sword guy. That's the long one sword mm-hmm. guy. But they have like a, like a, like one step below like scouts, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like one dudes in, in Necromunda that I always get confused. And then someone online was like, well, they have a smaller base. Like, I can't. You know how a twenty and twenty-eight new bases, base. a new base size, twenty-eight oh, yeah. millimeter base. Don't I get forgot about that. Shit. Yes, you, yeah. Well, do you have to use those bases or no? You're supposed to because base matters. Yeah, base size matters. But I mean, twenty-five to twenty-eight though. Like, yeah, but you know, so I built one wrong on a twenty-five instead of a twenty-eight, and yeah, I could get by, but I would know. So I fucking pried that thing off and put it on the right base. I did the exact same thing. Yes. I did realize it was three millimeters bigger, and I glued it on there, and I was like, fudge. Yeah. It, like, it, like I said, we only play with friends, so it doesn't matter, but it, it, it matters to me. Yeah. It's still real to me, me. And so, okay. So that, it, that lost that – lo- even though we don't do quarters Zerpy scores, that did quarters. take away a quarters Zerpy. Which would only matter if there was another quarter Slurpee deduction, well, you which can there do quarters, is. As long as it happens in your head and not yeah. the final rating. Right. I mean, you can, you can, I, I, I it canceled if it was the only quarter Slurpee deduction, but it's not. There's a second quarter Slurpee deduction. Yeah, I usually do like one sixteenth of a Slurpee. So I have a. It's, no, I don't have that. <laughs> and, while we're, and while we're on it, uh, I know in fantasy miniature games, they assume everyone's the same height. But in this game, they kind of don't. They've got small, medium, large, and extra large models. Mm-hmm. And that kind of corresponds to the base size, but not always. Not all, yeah. It's, it's leaders are on bigger ones than other guys, even if the model's the same size. Well, but they're not the same size. There's a weird scaling of all the, you know, and it's not just, you know, the dwarf is a dwarf, but, you know, 
the, the bases don't matter for um, the, the Age of Sigmar guys, right? Because that's just whatever they're on. You're just talking about the Chaos guys. Yeah, the Chaos guys, but again, like the, the Nugs are, are a lot smaller than the middle guys and the big and the leaders. So it's a weird kind of scaling where it's like the Nugs are five foot tall and the leader and the, the lieutenants are six foot tall and the, the leader is six five, something yeah. like that. So it's it it is it's it's intentional for the, the for those obviously. It's they, yeah. they want the leaders stand out. Yeah. All right. So the other the other beef I had was the the later cedary packs, which I was very excited for. I bought the temple one. It's two big platforms, and then I realized after one game that the scenery is shitty for this game. Well, there's no cover on that, right? There's no cover. A uh, a huge chunk of the of each each platform is steps that you can't put a guy on because it'll just yeah. go. Loop. I was so excited to buy that set until I played on it, and then I was like, nope. Nope, they this set is garbage. Right there. Cool with the basic one. I mean, it's like I said earlier, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah, that is that is great. No, that's a good one. Everything yeah. they released oh, after that was trash. Yeah, yeah. well, because I, I, again, I, I think it's just Age of Sigmar shit that you, you may say it comes out first on Warcry, but I think when it's all said and done, this is the only one that was is a Warcry terrain. It's the only one that was engineered to be used with Warcry. Right, yes. exactly. I'll give so that, that's a point off for that. What about this? I do like the head, though. Yeah, the head's cool. You know, oh yeah, the head's you awesome. If you're on, you want some head? You say yes. Um, you the campaign rules are weak overall. I think, extremely weak. I think the monster implementation, at least until they released the new stuff, was sloppy at best. Um, and the biggest beef with me is I was excited to try New Age of Sigmar armies, and they just do not play right. I think with this game. At least the the deep kin that I was very excited. I, to try. I don't have enough experience with all that. I, I think. You're probably right, um, but I think the the Age of Sigmar stuff to me is a complete. It's it's like I said earlier. If you're in a campaign, why are the Stormcast there again? It's to me, it's I play them in Age of Sigmar. I'm gonna play them in this. If you're serious about getting into this game, much like Necromunda, focus on the stuff in the game. I mean, there's eight factions and they all look cool. So like nothing shitty. Just and not that I'd ever play competitively, but I imagine at the top tier you don't see a lot of the chaos war bands at the top tier no i bet you pick the best of the best of the age of sigmar stuff mm -hmm. I, I i don't doubt that at all but if you actually want to play this game like it's intended and have fun with it and get into the fluff i think it should stick with it's the, just like the, with yeah. kill like i want it to be more like kill team where i was excited to try armies i've never played but and always liked the look of but never want to buy a 2000 point army can't really do that with work yeah i get you Again, with Mordheim, we did the same thing. Mordheim, the, the initial six warbands that they came out with were really well balanced and everything worked well. And then once you get all the elves and the dwarves and David in there, Rune and everything, Amazons, yeah, it all got crazy. So, I get it. all right, fair enough. Um, over to me. Uh, I will mirror Mike's rating and go 3.5 as well. Um, I, there were times I wanted to make it a four. And there were times I wanted to make it a three. Mm -hmm. um, when you take all of it into account, everything of what it is, you take the good, you take the bad, you take it all, and there we have the 3.5s of life. <laughs> we have, and Biron has Mrs. Garrett tied up in his basement, as usual. Girls, girls, girls! Oh, girls. It's like, Tootie, that looks like a bong in your room. <laughs> um, it's a very fun game and if you play against someone that you already play fun games with you will also have fun when you play the game and you do your deployments and your uh, terrain and your mission and you're like oh it's this one that makes you want to play it again because you hope that you get a better mission next time or you think wow there's a lot of missions like that maybe i'll change this around so i like the one-off game i don't have any campaign experience on this one but as a one-off game, if you play like a group of four people and you can easily get fresh games with the same war bands because of all the unique missions, all the unique terrain setups and switching out a model here and there where you can. And, and again, you have eight of those chaos ones and you've got Age of Sigmar if you really want to. Um, not, fan, not a big fan of the wound tracking, we talked about that. Um, I also think that depending on who you play, measuring might get a little goofy because 
this is a game where terrain is part of it. And if terrain's part of a game, that means it's also part of a rules question in the game or a discussion in the game. So I know that sometimes it gets a little hairy with people um, that you don't know or and that kind of thing. So I wanted to give it a four, but I think realistically, it's not that level of game for me. It is very fun though. I think 3.5 is fair. Extreme. So my turn. Um, I really, really want to like this game a lot. Um, it has a lot of things in it that are right up my alley. I really like all the mechanics of the game, that it doesn't work like a GW game. There's one role to do everything. That's awesome. I love that in all games that do it. Um, I thought the initiative phase is really cool. I like that whole concept. Um, I actually really like some of the things that Mike and Brian didn't like. I do like that there's less customization, so it's just kind of like a set thing because I think that works really well as a side game where I don't have to remember all my customizations and stuff. I just bring set, this is what it is. And it helps you too, to know what the other people do. Like once you've played against that army once, you kind of have an idea of what it does. You did not, oh, well, this guy brought different weapons. Well, so think about all, all the Blood Bowl games you've played over the years. Um, you know what every, you know the stats outside of upgrades of everybody in the game. So that's one variable out of it you don't have to you know it all and you probably would get close to that point if you, again if you especially if you ignore the age of sigmar stuff for a little bit if you focus on the chaos ones you can there's so many models out there for the other stuff um but you're right it, it'll help you become a better player and a smoother game because you're going to know everything yep so that's something that i really liked that i understand a lot of people don't but i i don't know i like um simplified dumbed down type games more i think so i think that kind of fits in there i really like the campaign system um from what i read i've never actually played it so maybe i don't but from reading it i really like it in that everybody has their own story track that they're on so you're really playing your own campaign you're not really competing as much and you don't have to worry about guys dying having a really bad game because you just kind of fill them back in and keep going um so i like that that's super simple too and there's not I don't know. I understand where it's not as deep or interesting, I guess, as some other games campaigns, but I like that it's simple and it's just a series of games. And because usually what happens when I play in campaign systems, um, I suck. I lose a bunch of games. And then I'm like, well, I'm still back here on track one. Everybody else is storming the castle. And cool, I'm looking for a gopher out in the woods. I don't know. This sucks. But this game, I'm like on my own story. I can just focus on that. Even if I'm losing games, I can kind of have my own adventure still. So I thought that was really cool. Is there a solo play option you're looking into for this? <laughs> I think it'd be you know, very that, difficult. You know, everyone laughed. I wasn't trying to get a laugh out of there. I just meant that maybe a, a solo campaign with four war bands or something. It would be very difficult to pull off, I think. You would uh, have to enjoy playing against yourself. And rolling dice against each other. It's like doubles and... Yeah. Do you want to use a wild dice? I don't know. Do I want to use a wild dice? <laughs> uh, one of the other things I really like, I love the Corvus Cabal models, the bird guys. Oh, great. Those models are so cool. I've been trying not to buy them since they came out because I really don't have any use for them other than this game. Um, so those are all my positives. I have a lot. I really, really wanted to like this game, but there's some negatives. Um, the two-player starter set, I was kind of looking around for it. It's already very difficult to find. The prices are crazy on eBay and the second-hand market already. The starter set is not uh, available anymore? No, they have a different starter set on their website that, that basically doesn't have the models in it. So everything, it looks like all the stuff's pieced together separately, and they'll sell you that, which would work. But yeah. it's still, like, you get the two-player starter, it gets everything in it at once, just kind of. And they're both cool. So that being hard to find, it kind of goes with uh, a lot of the way Games Workshop releases have been lately that kind of annoy me, where it's like, we did this print run, and we may or may not do another one. So you should have bought it the first time. Yeah. I, mean, well, I got into the game late. So. With dice that match. I don't need those. Oh, I want those. <laughs> should have bought them when you didn't need them, because now you can't get them. Or cards. Yeah, but, we do that all the time. With, with, which I understand if you're into the game from the beginning, but if I'm like trying to get into the game now and you're like, well, all that stuff came out at one point in time, you might be able to find it online somewhere. Like, well, that sucks. Like, just, just tell me you're going to print another one and I'll wait a little bit. Yeah. So that's annoying. Um, locally, like in my game store and then 
I don't go to the other game stores as often, but I follow them online on Facebook and stuff. I have heard zero talk of anyone playing Warcry. So for my own local kind of playing, I wouldn't have anyone to play against if I invested into the game. Is it always so centered around the battle games? I'm sorry? Is it always centered around the battle games at all times? Um, well, Kill Team's gotten pretty popular. Oh, Kill okay. Team and 40K are okay. both popular. Cool. Um, but um, so nine's coming out. Kill t- uh, 40K is just going to dominate again. Well, I mean, Probably. fantasy always took a backseat to 40K. Age of Sigmar probably not as bad, but let's not forget that. So now we're talking about the second system of the two. You know, 40K Age of Sigmar, the second system, and then the small game of that. So it's almost like 40K Kill Team is right where Age of Sigmar starts. You know what I mean? Where it's kind of, you're already up against the wall because most everyone's playing 40K universe games. And then you say, well, I don't even want to play Age of Sigmar. I want to play Warcry. Like Warcry, oh, that was that thing I got for Christmas. Still in the box. I used the scenery in my games. Right, yeah. It's good good models, good, good filler models. Uh, Mike, I think final- – I've never seen anyone other than us play it at Grognards. Which is, which is a shame. Not it's, often, yeah. And definitely not. Like really awesome. I think if I had like a cool group of people to play, I could see this being my main game. Like I, it has a lot of things that appeal to me to it. Um, the final negative I had was like trying to look at it and get into the game at this point. There's so much out there and it's kind of confusing on what I actually need like there's no like straight like the only thing advice I saw was buy the two-player starter and buy the army you want all right well I can't find the two-player starter so I'm already fucked and I know what army I want so that's good but then I've seen these books out I see these packs of cards like I know like you can educate yourself but it's not easy to get into oh you're right it's it's easier for an Age of Sigmar player to just pull their existing models it looks looks like the the starter collection is everything from the two player starter minus the army. So actually I think in a way that's better. You get the terrain. That way you're only buying war bands you want. Is the terrain in there? Yes. The terrain's in there. The cards are in there. The boards in there and all the counters are in there. What's that run? It's 148. Oh. So it sounds about it's a it's a worse deal because I want to say the two player starter was two hundred and it came with two. No, it was like one. It was less than that, but was it? It was less than two hundred, but more than one fifty. I remember that. It's like one eighty or whatever. Like so, it is more expensive now, but for one forty eight, and then it's another fifty. So you're looking at two hundred bucks to get started with only one warband. But like Johnny was talking about in a previous episode, you're going to want a second army to teach someone how to play. So yeah. now you're up in the two fifty range. Um, well, well maybe thing, this is also a result of their across the board price hike that just happened too. It's, I mean, would you say that? I mean, what, what is on brand for Games Workshop being uh, a good value isn't always one of them. It's kind of like, you know, when people talk about like their health insurance, like, I've got good insurance. No, it all sucks. Um, when it comes to GW, you say, wow, I get this, this, this all in the box, and it's only two fifty, like. 250 like, <laughs> 250 is a lot of money yeah but like because we trick ourselves when you play games workshop games you want to justify your purchases so when something seems like a good deal you tell yourself it is well because everyone bases it upon what is a box of tactical marines or what is a box of primaris marines yeah. nowadays like i'm getting this many models for less than the cost of tactical marines right so it's a good deal it's comparatively cheap. Well, it's not cheap i mean let's you know yeah, it's like I got this BMW on sale. Right, it was only. <laughs> uh, so before I get to my ranking, one more thing I wanted to talk about. You guys harped on the symbols being so close that it was really hard to tell. Um, welcome to my world. As the colorblind, colorblind guy in the group, I'm going to say almost every game I play, there's something that's so close for me that it's very difficult for me to tell which is which. And now you all have to deal with it. So stop it. We need to we're, we need to check our privilege. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, very, very fair point. I mean, in those games, I mean, you're you're focusing on the the shapes rather than the colors. So yeah, fair point. It's um, what annoys me is it was clearly avoidable. They, um, there's a lot of don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everything, but there's a lot of symbols that are 
you know, different things like the, the, the head on fire. Like I know GW loves skulls. That's their thing. They love skulls. We all know that. But the iron golems have that like hash kind of hash mark, you know, the blade. That's cool. There's some really cool ones, but there's so many based around a skull and star. And that was like, you know, you could have put a fucking triangle, like nothing fancy, just a straight up triangle, not even isosceles. Give me a fucking whatever. Give me a, a cute whatever. Um, it was avoidable. So that was my only beef was like. They should have had a 60-pointed star and a 59-pointed <laughs> star. That's right. Or at least 58, because maybe the 59, the OCD, we would have been like, I don't know what's That's a prime off. number. I don't know about that. Something's <laughs> off. 58 would be like, I don't know. Now I don't know. You pulled one from each other. I don't even know. Oh. Uh, fair enough, Those extreme. things don't actually affect your enjoyment that much. It's just like, why? It, it's not a huge deal, but there was a couple times where I did do something wrong because yes. I glanced. Yes, it, it, it has impacted me as well in the same way. Fault, I glanced at it, saw the chaos symbol, and just went, cool, that guy's got a chaos symbol. Like, no, that was the leader chaos symbol. The I don't want to have to pay attention symbol. when I'm playing a game. Oh, yeah. the, the leader chaos symbol is bold. And I'm like, I didn't even, like, it was too close. But it's not a game record by any means. Yeah, so I, I guess uh, uh, my end. person at GW that did it that way on purpose to go, now you can. <laughs> Are you going to talk about why there's no twos and why it's only ones and threes? Um, I, I think it's perfectly reasonable. So if you have two, what if two ones with friends... two tokens, then you go to three, then four is also two tokens. No, because what, my point is, are you going to be the guy that makes change all day when we're getting to 30? I probably would because I would want a clean number until I upgraded to dials, and then I would get rid of the tokens altogether. As long as you hit your timer and you make that change on your own time in a tournament, <laughs> go ahead. But not on my watch. By the way, all my Slurpee ratings are going to be one or three going forward. <laughs> he doesn't exist anymore. Oh, or, hold on, or five. Or five. Yeah, one, three, or five. Or ten. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I really want to love this game, but there's too many things that are stopping me from, like, the only way I can see getting into this game is if they re-release the two-player starter and the game store said, hey, we're doing a campaign, we have a bunch of people interested, then I could see getting into it. Otherwise, I really wouldn't. Um, so I'm going to give it a three. Ooh, okay. Three, I think we said there isn't zero, so three is average, not a bad score. But a lot lower than I expected to give it because it checks um, off a lot of things I like in the game. That comes to a, a 3.125. Is it 3.25 or 3.125? Three? 3. We wound up. So it's going to be a 3.25. And I love that because yeah, much like our votes don't matter in real life when your state has already chosen their, their, uh, their elected official, um, it would be the same as if Extreme gave it, uh, what did you give it, 3? If you gave it a 3.5, same, same rating, right? Yeah, it would be the same, yeah. So you're, I think whoever votes last is all, always Mr. Irrelevance, which is kind of funny. Anyway. Because <laughs> it's like California in the, in the presidential election. Like, sorry, decided by that. Like Hawaii. Usually they never played the game. So their vote does kind of count a little, it's a little bit less. Not a lot less. A like three-fifths of a vote, maybe. But if I gave it a one, <laughs> then it would have some effect. Yes, it would there. If, if you, you were a troll, you could yeah, troll vote sure. I can't wait till we get to some... Uh, like actual, what's the word? Controversial games. Blood Bowl? There's yeah. two of them I can think of. Well, I mean, Biron hates everything Mansic, but, but I have a lot of fun with them. So, I mean, right now we've all been, I mean, Extreme is a stats man. Bam, bam, I'm a stats man. Um, they're all kind of like this, though. We haven't really done a whole lot of this. I think we're all in the 3.5-ish. We're all the one point away. I gave, I gave uh, one five. Yeah. Has anyone, no one else has given a five. You're the only one that gave a five. Yeah. I gave a 4.5 to Relic Blade. I gave 4.5 to Relic Blade. Any twos? No. 2.5 is uh, a little bit gone, I think. Oh, this was 2.25 for you. Yep. Yeah, I think 2.5 is the lowest so far. Okay. I, I'm I, don't, looking I can't tell I'm using my phone. Well, I just want to see some, uh, you know, I know we can easily be divided. As a country, yep. we're divided right now. As a, a podcast slash YouTube channel, we're very united, and I'm tired of it, frankly. 
So I mean, when we get uh, to blood, when we get to blood bowl, I think uh, it'll be interesting. Extreme. If we ever touch 40k, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah, you're in charge of the topics, extreme. It's your job to take us to Flavor Town. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I've been to Guy Thierry's Flavor Town Chicken Restaurant <laughs> in Orlando. Yeah. And it's way better than it needs to be. Okay. Well, how many Zlurpees? I'd give it a 4.5. Oh, wow. Okay, good to know. All right. And it's also um, reasonably priced in Orlando, which is hard to find. That is not a segue into what I'm talking about now. But <laughs> it is a episode of Zlurpcast TV. Uh, if you like what you saw, then the other ones are also up your alley too, if I can be so bold as to know what your alley consists of. And these shows are pretty much it. So you're going to want to slurp on that sub button, use a socked foot if you need to. Oh. No, no bare feet today, because uh, I'm wow. downstairs. I have rules. So bare feet upstairs because it's hot, socks downstairs because it's cold. We have like crazy swings. It's like a game of frost grave here with the swings on the roll of D20. It's 60 on the first level. 70 on the next one, and 90 on the third level. And it's, it's driving me nuts right now. Um, if you like this show, though, and you love miniature games, we're going to get more into board games, maybe even a card game or two, then every other episode, you're going to see that for the most part. And we're covering other shit, too. Like, what to do at a con? Should you get drunk? Should you take a shower? All those things. Find out that and more. Find out, you know, I don't, what, the last episode, a couple of episodes ago, you know, who was B.A. Baracus of the four of us? We tell you that. We told you who th what that was. So all I'm saying is you're going to like this show because you made it all the way to the end of this one. If you want to get a shirt, not like this, not like Biron's, not like Extreme, not like Mike's, but if you want to get a shirt that has some of this kind of stuff on it, you can't see it. Fuck. <laughs> we'll blow it out. Point did it get really bad? Okay. Then you go to slurpcast.net. You can get stickers. You get a notebook, get leggings, whatever. And if you don't see what you want, you're like, I don't want a slim shirt. Click the shirt and then click view all products. And there is a plethora of products there for you to choose from. Um, so thanks for watching. Next one will be, we don't know, do we? No? We don't know. The next one is going to be a topic. <laughs> That's it. This is the time when we say our goodbyes. Goodbye. Bye. Oh. to you by McMurdy's. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba, I'm loathing it.